you're ready to increase your medication, Charlie. Yes. And who is this woman sitting next to you? I am Aida. Aida? What? Yes, I was mysteriously teleported here. She's been following me around for two days. Aida, is there anywhere else you could stay? I don't think it's a good idea for Charlie to have a visitor right now. No, I think I'll stay with Charlie. We have this weird connection. <gasps> Here, take a look at this, Charlie. What do you see? I see, um, the ink blot. Looks like Nubian slaves being beaten by Egyptian soldiers to me. Okay, um, here, how about this one? Oh, that's a red ink blot. That looks like a nurse and her beautiful handmaidens. Okay, I think that's enough for today. But we just got here. Um, you're not the one being tested on here, lady. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how you got into this laboratory. You know too much, and what you say is better left unknown. Do I know you? Oh, his name's Maribert. What? Listen, Charlie Art, stay where I can see you. Yesterday I had the police call to me because people thought I was schizophrenic walking down the road. Okay, there's a person living in my house who thinks she's from Nubia. I don't want to think that I'm going psycho. Don't open your mouth at me. You know, all you've been talking about is Rodimies, Rodimies, Rodimies. Just go back to Rodimies. But I love him. We don't live elaborate lives. Nothing's written in the stars. You know nothing about me and care even No, this. I don't care. That's the thing, okay? All you do is walk around here knocking on the TV because people are trapped. You just need to go back where you came from. Go back but, to Nubia. But we're written in the stars. Nothing's written in the stars. They're stars. You just don't understand. What don't I understand? It's just an elaborate life. Literally, we're sitting in an apartment. Nothing's elaborate. But the gods love Nubia. Nubia's fake. Nubia will never die. Just go. You take your Nubian insanity and just get out. Please excuse this humble palace slave. This is an apartment, not a palace. It's enough. That's my blanket. Let me pack your things for you. Thank you! Ah! I'm sick of following my dreams. I'm just going to ask them where they are going and hook up with them later. Them being Dr. Strauss and Professor Niemer. I'll ask them where Charlie is, too. But I just don't feel like I belong in this world. I don't even really know how I got here. I was in Egypt and put into this crazy different place with this strange new man, Charlie Gordon. What an odd name. He seems very upset with me. Maybe I should just try to get back to Nubia somehow. He obviously doesn't want me here. Do you know where she is? My friend. Aida. I, I, I lost her. Uh, well, I told her to go away. And she did. And well, I miss her. And well, well, where could she be? At the, there? Well, you want me to look there? Oh, but I'm, I'll get sad there and maybe start cry. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll check. Maybe Aida will be there. Charlie talked a lot about you. He really loved you, didn't he? But he's been acting different. Strange. Not as smart as he used to be. I hope Charlie gets back to normal soon. And I hope I can go back to Egypt with Radames too. And this is how the story ends. Charlie went to look for Aida, but he couldn't find her because I took her back to Nubia.
Hey, JB. It's, it's me, Chris. Um, this is weird. I, I'm trying to talk to you, but uh, you're down there. Listen, JB, I, I guess I just always figured you knew how to swim. Not that I spent a lot of time thinking about it or anything, it's just, you're JB. It always seemed like you could do everything. So, if you didn't know how to swim, then uh, why weren't you wearing a life jacket, you know? Or your uncle, right? It was, it was his boat. He could have made you put one on. I mean, come on, JB. I wouldn't have to be... You could... I, I didn't come here to be mad at you. I, I came to say that I'm sorry. That I didn't make it to your funeral. I had things to do, you know? Of, of course you know. Anyway, I felt bad about it, so why didn't make up for it? Throw on a little party, and you're the guest of honor, and you know, since it didn't seem like a good idea to dig you up and bring you back to my place, I figured we'd have it here. It's your place. Your new place. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll clean things up a little bit before everyone gets here. Uh, Catherine's coming, and Betty, and uh, Larry, and... The new girl, I keep wanting to say her, uh, Susie, but I know that's not right. And Tillman's coming, but uh, he didn't seem to like the idea of being in a cemetery. Kid is a nerd. And don't get mad about this one, but I kind of invited Lisa. Listen, I, I know you broke up with her just last week, but I also know you still really cared about her. What I don't understand is why you broke up with her. I mean, come on, she's the best. Well, there you go. Uh, all you need now is, um, flowers. <laughs> there you go. Looking good, JB. It's over this way. Are you sure, Sarah? Yes. Sarah, that's it. Catherine and Sarah are bringing the chips and sodas, and uh, Betty and Larry are bringing the music. I hate Larry's taste in music, even if you like it. But you know, he's the only one who had a good CD player. I don't think this is the right way. It is! I'll be right back, JB. I, I think you're going to appreciate this. I was here for the funeral, and I remember that it was right over... Here! Here it is! Well, it's about time. Look, we're the first ones here. I don't see how, since you spent two hours touring the entire cemetery. It made a big loop like I said it would, and we're still the first ones here. Wow. Yeah, it's just so hard to believe. Yeah, well, that too. Why? What were you thinking? I never knew his middle name was Bride Catherine. Well, I went out with him, and you'd think you would know somebody when you go out with him, and I just never knew his middle name was Brian. You went out with James? Well, yeah. When? It was when we were freshmen. There was that fall dance. I went to it, and James went to it, and while we were there, he asked me to dance. And that's when you started going out? Uh, that's when we went out. You mean that's it? One dance? Two dances. They were such nice songs. One of them was a slow song. I don't believe it. He was such a good dancer. Catherine, two dances is not going out with someone. Well, for me it was. And besides, I thought about the dance for a whole month afterward. That's practically like going steady. Katie! Well, Sarah, it meant a lot to me at the time. It was the first time anyone had ever really asked me out. He didn't ask you out. All right. He asked me if I wanted to dance. It was still the first time anyone had ever done that. I mean, think about it. Here was this totally good-looking guy coming up to me, and in front of my friends asking if I wanted to dance with him. Oh, what a rush. Of course, I kept hoping he'd ask me out to a movie or something, but he never did. I really wanted to hate him for not asking me out again, but he wouldn't let me. He had this way of being a friend, you know? Like a real friend, and that's what I needed the most. Do you know why he asked you to dance? No. I was 
gonna ask him after graduation, but now I'll never know. Oh, Katie, Katie, here. Why? Where'd the sodas go? The what? The sodas, I put them right here. Maybe to get them back, you have to take a long loop around. Ah, uh, very funny. I know I put them down right now. Ah! This is jerk. Look what you made me do. That was terrible. Just leave those. Those can be for JB. How long have you been there? Just a little bit before you guys. You know, I, I took the direct route. Shut up. You can't do that. No. Why not? It just doesn't seem right. Isn't it a... Uh... Sacrilegious or something? It's just a tombstone. We're not going to dig up the body or anything. Oh, yuck. <laughs> Don't talk about stuff like that. It's just so hard to believe. What is us? Uh, Sue? Sarah. Sarah? That James is dead. Right. I mean, I came here for the funeral. I watched them lower his casket into the ground, and yet I still can't believe he's gone. I know. James was the first person I met when I moved here. I hate moving. We're always doing it, though, because of my dad. He's always trying to please people, especially his bosses. If somebody even suggests that a part of the company in another city, in another state, could use his help, he packs us up and ships us off. He keeps saying it's his way of moving up in the company, but he's not moving up. He's just moving around. Must be hard being the new girl a lot. Well, yeah, but I got pretty good at not looking like the new kid. I learned a couple of tricks, like I'd memorize my classroom numbers before my first day at school so that I wouldn't have to walk around looking at a piece of paper. I learned how to walk as if I knew where I was going, even if I didn't have a clue. Nothing shouts new kid louder than someone walking along gawking at the numbers on the classroom doors. I never knew that about you. When did you move here? Two years ago. A record of longevity for my family. That's so weird. I always really grew up together, you know? Played dolls and had tea parties and stuff. No, it just seems like I've known you forever. Mm -hmm. So how'd you meet JB? On my first day here. I'm walking along looking for my first class. Only I don't look like I'm looking for my first class. I look like just another student walking along the halls. Suddenly, James is walking along beside me saying, Hi, I'm James Wilson, and you're new here. Can I help you find your class? I was going to tell him that I didn't need any help, but there was just something about him. So I said, Weatherby's American History. Advanced American History, he said, and he took me right there. Only he didn't make a big deal out of it. He seemed to know that it was important to me not to look like the new kid. When my class was done, he was out in the hall waiting for me. He just walked right up and said, I've got art next, how about you? Math, I said, and he asked, Potter or Forsyth? Potter, I told him, and away we went. It was that way for the rest of the day. I didn't even tell him my name until my last class. Maybe he just wanted to ask you out. Well, of course, that's what I thought. There's always at least one guy at every school who has to be the first to hit on the new girl, but James wasn't like that. He never asked me out. He seemed, he was the first real friend I had at any of my schools. But now, I just can't believe. Come on, come on. There are three of us here. We got chips and sodas. So? So this is a party. And there's only happiness and laughter allowed at my parties. I'm not so sure that chips, sodas, and the three of us are enough to make this a party. What else do you need? Music! <laughs> then consider this a party. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. Hi, um, Sarah. Yeah. Hey! Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. Do you try to pick music this bad, or does it just come naturally to you? It doesn't come to me at all. It was my brother's. He said his wife wouldn't allow it in her house. <laughs> I like her. It's good stuff, isn't it? Jimmy always liked it. 
Oh, uh, you know, you shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Ah, so what? Was I the only one with a good CD player? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't worry, Chris. I brought some good stuff. Excellent. Where'd you get that stuff? From your brother's wife. Now, put your CDs away. But my stuff put is Put it away. For everyone, we're officially engaged. Oh, wow! That's so great! Congratulations! Hey, that's a nice ring, Larry. Thank you. Betty picked it out herself. No kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, big. It was the best one in the store. I know that Larry only wants what's best for me. That's right, sweetie. Wait, how could you afford something like that? <laughs> well, Larry said he'll take a second job down at Wawa. They're always needing night help. Yep. Listen, listen, I, I, I know you two have like, been together longer than my own parents ever were, but uh, what made you decide to pop the question now? Jim's funeral. His funeral? Yes. Well, no. Before that. I'm really confused. I asked Jim once if I should marry Larry. He told me he couldn't answer that. He asked me if I loved him, and I said, of course I do. But I didn't want to ruin what we had by making changes. He said that life was always changing, and sometimes those changes were good, and sometimes bad. And sometimes you could control those changes, and sometimes not. I haven't really thought about that till I saw him in that coffin. I decided that spending the rest of my life with Larry was good, and a change I could control. So, what, what, did you propose to him? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, you did not. I most certainly did. You suggested that we get married. And? And I got down on my knee. After I told you to. I asked you to marry me. That is so sweet, you guys. <laughs> and you said, not until I have a ring. Larry, you're almost romantic. What do you mean, almost? I'll have you know I can be just as romantic as the next guy. Oh, sure, providing the next guy is. I don't think I like this. Tillman! Tillman! I can't believe he's actually coming to the party. Come on, Tillman, it's not so bad. What do you mean, not so bad? It's a graveyard. It's where the dead people live. Is that Lisa? Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought that her and James broke up before. Yeah. They broke up, all right? But I, I know he still really cared about her. Then why did he break it off? Yeah, she was really upset. She called me for advice. Nobody calls me for advice. I don't know why you broke up with her. It's the only stupid thing I ever knew him to do. Realistically, I know there's absolutely nothing to fear in a graveyard. But I just can't help the feeling something is going to come up and grab me from behind. Oh, God! <laughs> Hi, Chris. Guys. Tillman, Tillman, you surprise me. Scientific, rational mind like yours afraid to be in a cemetery? I'm sure you find the long-term effects of childhood fears to be very rational and scientific. I'm sure. Okay, this isn't some practical joke, is it? Lure me into a graveyard, have someone reach up through the dirt, grab me, pull me down, and scare me out of my wits. Until you know what Good. I'm glad you came, Lisa. What's the matter with it? Well, look, everybody's got flowers by their grave except for this one. <laughs> it's just so sad. Here, here, we, we, we can fix that. Uh, pardon? No wonder why she doesn't have any flowers. Her entire family probably croaked before she did. Well, there, what do you think? It's really nice. Well, this old lady was 98 years old. 97. 98. 97. Tilly boy, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on this one. She was born in 1887 and died in 1985. The old broad was 98 years old. Maybe, but she was 97. Listen, you nerd brain, pocket protective gay! Larry! No, I've had it with this guy. Him and all of his chess club buddies, always asking the intelligent questions, always know the answers. Now he makes one little mistake in math and he won't even admit it! 18, no, 1995 minus 1887 is 98. 
She was born in October and died in March. Ergo, she had not reached her 98th birthday. Ergo, she died at age 97. Uh, no. What does ergo mean? It means Tillman was right. Really? You must think you're pretty smart, picking on my Larry like that. Actually, no. I was just saying the obvious. What's obvious here is that you've got a mind like a computer. That's for sure. So, Mr. Genius, what are your plans for after graduation? Plans? Oh, you know, like, uh, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Go? MIT, Harvard, DeVry. Well, oh, come on. <laughs> Tillman, if anyone's got plans for the fall, it's going to be you. Actually, promise not to laugh. I'm planning to go to clown school. Clown school? As in, send in the clowns? As in, make them laugh, make them laugh, make them laugh? As in, Bozo, you're kidding us, right? I'm quite serious. But you're the smartest kid in our class. Whatever made you decide to go to clown school? And is there such a thing? Oh, yes. There are schools devoted to the study of clowning. I guess Jim was sort of the catalyst who persuaded me to enroll in one of them. JB. JB. Thought you were funny and told you to go to clown school? Not uh, precisely. However, I remember him talking to me once about following a dream. At lunch one day, he just started talking about doing what you wanted to do. It's more important, he said, for a person to be happy in their life's vocation than it is to try to make others happy. And clowning makes you happy? Oh, yes. I was four years old when I saw my first clown. A tiny car pulled behind the ringmaster. Not big enough for a child to sit in, much less than an adult. And then a guy with wild green hair and the baggiest clothes I've ever seen squeezed himself with that little vehicle. Even at that age, I knew the physical laws of science. And I knew what I'd just seen wasn't right. And then that clown held open the car door and 12 more clowns tumbled out. I let off the biggest good fall. <laughs> And then those clowns proceed to accidentally trip and fall and hit each other with rubber bats, ladders, bricks, and creamy pies. And all they did was for one reason, to make people laugh, and we did. Right there and then, I knew what I wanted to do. Even though my parents wanted me to study engineering or becoming a doctor, how I told them how I felt they said I could make people happy by becoming a doctor or studying new medicines or building things that make life easier. But it's just, just not the same. So when Jim talked to me about following your dream, I knew he was right. So this September, I start clown school. That's incredible. I think it's really neat. But don't you think you're wasting your natural talents? Yeah, you're so good at science and math. Math, that's just it, don't you see? What? I'll be using lots of math and the timing of my routines. Comedy is all in the timing after all. And as you said, I'm very good at math. But Tillman, I don't, I don't think that that's... I've been working on a little routine. Here, watch. Step, two, three, fall, roll, two, three. And step. Step, two, three, fall, face, first, spread eagle. Step, two, lift head. Step, two, shake head. Step, three, down. <laughs> So, what do you guys think? It has a lot of falling. Yeah, that's always funny. I think you could really use a school for clowning. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was stupid. Lisa! Come on, Lisa. Well, it was, and you know it. Well, Lisa wasn't as stupid as Larry over there pouting. Larry, you were wrong. Get over it. Well. I thought for once that I was right and the brain was wrong. Larry, be quiet. For your information, Larry is a very sensitive man. He's introspective. He's not pouty. And who are you, his bodyguard and press secretary? I'm just speaking up for my man. Your man? That's right. We're engaged. <gasps> Congratulations! I give you two weeks, then you'll join the other 87% of high school marriages in divorce. I'll have you know that our love is true, and we're not going to end up like any of those other high school marriages. Yeah, 
Nobody thinks they're going to get a divorce in two weeks. If they did, they wouldn't get married in the first place. You're just jealous because you and James will never get married. That has nothing to do with this. Oh, come off it. First he dumps My relationship with James is better than anything you and Pouty Boy over there will ever have. He's sensitive. He's a whip. He's alive. Hey. Hey, come on. This is a party. We're all friends here. Friends? Party? Get real, Chris! What is your problem? The guest of honor is dead! What kind of party is that? And besides, maybe you. I don't consider anyone else here a friend. Larry's a pathetic jerk. Hey! hey. Betty's domineering. Katie's an airhead. And you? I don't even know. You might be nice, but you put up so many walls, it's hard to tell. And Tillman. Does anybody else know anything about Tillman? Other than he's the smartest kid in school? At least I used to think so until I saw that stupid clown routine. I don't even know if Tillman's your first or last name. James knew. James? James is the only thing any of us had in common. And now he's... He's... He's gone! And none of us are any better off. We're just a bunch of losers! Hey, come on, Lisa, it's okay. I know. I'm sorry. I don't know what got into me. I think I do. You need some time to say goodbye. We have too many loose ends. Hey, hey, guys, uh, any of you ever seen the inside of a mausoleum? No. Come on, I gotta show you this. I got you, Tilly. This old lady was living her 98th year before her 98th birthday. Maybe. But if you use that line of logic, that would mean that she was 97. Loose ends? Well, of course there's loose ends. You died. How was I supposed to know this was going to happen? So what do I say now? Except, I hate you. I hate you for breaking up with me. And I hate you even more for dying, because now we'll never make up and we'll never get back together. And I absolutely hate you for that! And I absolutely love you. And I know that no matter what happens for the rest of my life, I'll know what love is because of you. I know we never talked about our future much, but I thought it was because we didn't have to. We knew we were going to be together. I knew it anyway. You might have known something else. But you're my life. Everything I did within the past three years, I thought about how it affected you, as well as me. There was no you and me. There was only us. Maybe Betty's right. Maybe I am jealous. Larry might not be much, but at least he's breathing. Okay. I know you never liked how I teased Larry. He was your friend after all. Though I sure didn't know why, except you both like that same bizarre old music. But I did know calling someone a friend was more than just a term to you. It always meant something. Oh God, why'd you have to go? There's so many holes and so many lies. I just I know that even though you broke up with me, I would have still seen you at the spring formal. I know because you promised to save me at least one dance, and you always kept your promises. So, James Bryan Wilson, I'm here to collect that promise. When I look into your eyes, it's like a wild.
Watching the night sky Or a beautiful sunrise For there's so much they hold And just like them old stars I see that you've come so far To be right where you are Give up on us Even if the skies get rough I'm giving you all my love I'm still looking You feel better? Not quite. I'm sorry. For what? For ruining the party. For what I said to the others. Don't get over it. And besides, everything you said was true. No, it wasn't. I mean, okay, maybe the only thing we had in common was our friendship with James. And James is now. It's not like we have him in common anymore. But we do. Don't you see, Chris? Just because James is gone doesn't make the fact that he was our friend any less true. James was the only real friend any of us had. But he left us with each other. He left us with his friend. Now you're starting to sound like the Lisa I know. Calm, rational, always looking on the bright side of things. It's part of what JB loved about you. He did love you, you know. I know. He loved you too. You were his closest friend. At first I thought it was strange. You seem so different from each other. But I know that's what he liked about you. You helped him see the other side of things. Somebody had to. He was too trusting. Too giving. Maybe. But I think he thought you were too cynical. You didn't go to the funeral. I couldn't. Your dad? Sheeves and I talked about a lot of things. Do you want to talk about it? No. Yeah. Yeah, it was my dad. I wanted to go. He was, he was my best friend. How could I not be there? I told my dad I was going to JB's funeral. He just said no. I tried to walk out the door anyway, and my, my dad comes out of nowhere, grabs me from behind, and throws me back in the house. Dad, I said, it's JB's funeral. He just screamed at me, so I tried to walk out again, and my own father turns me around and punches me in the face. I said no. Don't you walk out that door when I say no. I pleaded with him. Why can't I go? Because you didn't mow the lawn. Can you believe it? I didn't mow the lawn. My own father is beating me up because I didn't mow the lawn. I said I'd do it when I got home. I'd even do it twice so I didn't miss a spot. And I meant it. My best friend is dead. And instead of going to his funeral to say goodbye, I'm, I'm outside mowing the lawn. I'm sure he'd understand. And I know he'd understand. He always understood. You know, when I heard that JB was dead, I wished it was my father instead. JB's been my friend since fifth grade. He's the only one who's ever made me realize that it's not my fault my dad beats me up. He's been there through every punch, every kick, every head slammed into a door. My mom walked out on us before I could even walk. And my dad has been taking it out on me ever since. JB's been the only one I could go to. You know, I, I, don't, 
I don't think my dad ever liked JP. Because it meant I had something he didn't. A friend. Of course, he couldn't get mad at JP. Nobody ever could. He had to get mad at me instead. But with every beating that I took, I knew in the back of my mind that I had someone I could go to. Someone I could share my pain with. And then somehow that made it not hurt quite so bad. And it just made the future look so much better than the past. And now I've lost my friend. And my future. And I miss him. You're not alone, Chris. You're not alone. Oh, jeez, please don't say it's the... Oh, no, not fruit again. What a surprise. Come on, quit it, Frankie. Yeah, Frankie. And besides, you'll be kissing the ground I walk on. And you live to be 102, all because of your good eating habits. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, say, Diane, I, I was wondering... Uh... What's on your mind, Scotty? Well, I was thinking your mom must get bright red in the face when you come home every day with your clothes cut if you did. Nah, she gave up on me a long time ago. She just thinks it's odd that I play on top with you two fellas instead of spending time with my girlfriends. You know, to be honest, I think I see enough of them in the school corridors to last a lifetime. You do, huh? Hey, for all the years I've known you, I don't think we ever talked about what your school is like. But yeah, yeah, what's your school like, Diane? I don't know. It's just like any other school. <laughs> I bet it's not like any of the schools on our side of town, huh, Scotty? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Now, what do you mean by that, Frankie? Oh, well, I mean, well, for starters, you go to a private school. What's that like? I don't know. I guess it's the same as any other school. You have a few interesting teachers, clubs, lunch, prayer time. Wait, wait. Prayer time? What do you pray for? Regular junk. That's on my mind. I can't even remember the last time I went to church. That long ago, huh? Yeah, I go maybe a few times a year, and that's only because my mom starts to feel bad, say I'm not religious and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, do you fellas still want to hear about my school? Well, my new favorite subject is English. I used to really like science, but now it's so hard with all the math involved. Anyway, today in English, we were talking about Hemingway. Hemingway? What's a Hemingway? It's not a what is a, it's a who is a. What? Hemingway is a person. He was a famous writer way back. Oh. Yeah, I guess we haven't gotten to him yet in English class, Scotty. Yeah. I bet you fellows will learn about him tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. It's your turn to tell me about your school. What's it like? Our school? Uh, I don't know. Boring, I guess. Well, hell on earth! It's terrible. I bet it isn't that bad. <laughs> yes, it is. It's terrible. Stop. Well, how are the people there? Um, I don't know. The sophomores aren't half bad, and neither are the freshmen. I guess it's just the uh, juniors and seniors who make it so rough. Well, what do they do? What do they not do? They just act so big and bad and try and make everyone else feel small. Why don't you tell the teachers on them? We can't. Of course you can. No, no, Diane, you don't get it. We can't. It's just... These kids, especially the guys, they just... They just 
don't care about getting in trouble. Oh. I'm... I'm sorry. Well, I bet they wouldn't be so mean if someone just teaches them that there's another way. I mean, they have so much to look forward to. Graduation, college... College? No one goes to college on our side of town. I mean, some girls oh. try for beauty school, but that's about it. You know, I had a chance to go to college. Make something of myself, too. But when my mom got sick, the money for her treatment was my tuition money. And you know what the messed up part is? It said the freaking treatment didn't work. It was supposed to work, right? But anyway, she's gone now. And all I feel, all I can think of in the back of my mind is is how disappointed she would be. You know, I'm just sick of following my dreams. I'm just going to ask them where they're going and hook up with them later. Because I don't see any happiness for me later. Come on now, Frank. You know your mom was proud. No, no. All she wanted was for me to be something special. I'm not smart, I'm not athletic. I don't have any special talents. I'm never leaving this freaking town. Now, Frankie, believe me when I say this. I know you. And you're a great fella. And your mom would be proud of you. She'd be proud to call you her son. College doesn't make a person who he is. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. tell you what. College made a person who he was. There'd be a lot of coming people. I'll tell you that. Yeah, my mom didn't go to college either. See, this is why I love you fellas. I never know what to expect. When I'm with you, I actually have ideas. Think about how, think about that colored woman on the bus, how she wouldn't give up her seat for a white man. And think about how strong her soul must be. Think about everything. You know, Diane, I think you're pretty special. I feel so ordinary with your big thoughts, but I wouldn't have it any other way. To make me far. <laughs> You were taking me out to dinner. Andrew! Hello? Hi, is Andy there? This is Andy. Andy, this is Meredith. Oh, hi, Meredith. Hi, I was calling about this letter you sent me. Oh, uh, the letter. It's a poem. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> But I can't really read most of it. Your handwriting is terrible. <laughs> anyway, why did you send me this poem? Um, well, uh, it's an English assignment. And uh, I, was, I was wondering if you could correct it for a, a spelling and grammar and, and things like that. Well, I would if I could read it. Do you think you could make me another copy? <laughs> no, that's OK. I have the whole thing memorized. <laughs> um, you could just follow along on your copy. Well, all right. <laughs> <clears throat> Dear Meredith, <laughs> uh, uh, that's not part of the poem. You see, it just, it just says that in the letter. <laughs> Dear Meredith, you are the sun in my sunshine, the grapes upon the vine. In fact, that fits you well, my dear, for your kisses are like wine. You work real hard, which... Wait, you missed the line. What? 
right off here in the margin it says, <laughs> I think your kisses are like wine. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, Meredith, that's that, that's just a little uh, a joke. So you wouldn't get too bored reading the poem. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Go ahead. You work real hard, which I admire. Yet through it all, you don't perspire. Two mistakes here. Perspire is spelled P-E-R-S-P-I-R-E, -E, not P-I-R-S. Also, you use the wrong kind of through. It should be T-H-R-O-U-G-H instead of T-H-R-E-W. <laughs> I used to do that all the time. <laughs> Go ahead. Through it all, you don't... Oh, um, uh, your, your hair stays straight, your smile sweet. By gosh, I think you're really neat. You're good at everything you do, riding bikes and skating too, knitting clothes and cooking rice. Wait, there's something else off to the side here. Oh, Meredith, you really don't Wait have to read minute, that. Wait a minute, I want to read it. It says, maybe same, no, maybe someday people will be throwing rice at, will be throwing rice at us, <laughs> Andy. Um, Meredith, I, I really gotta go. It's, uh, it's dinner time. Uh, knitting clothes and cooking rice. By gosh, I think you're really, really nice. Goodbye, Meredith. Bye, Andy. Well, I, I just don't like the idea. After all, it's not uh, exactly Meredith, Meredith, like I'm 66 years old. It's not too early to be thinking of these things. Any time is, is too early. I may be saving someone else, maybe even you, the trouble. I do know my own life best. Will you listen to it, please? Andrew G. Powers, a lifelong resident of Fieldsbury, Massachusetts, died yesterday, the blank of blank. Born on November 16, 1965, Mr. Powers was a healthy baby and, most always, very happy. He continued to be that way throughout most of his life. He attended Larabee's Grammar School. Tease in attended, dear. Ah. <laughs> he attended Larabee Grammar School and then went to Folk River Junior High School, where he played baseball and hockey. At Fieldsbury High School, he studied hard and received good grades. <laughs> Almost good grades, <laughs> while being active in baseball, basketball, and drama. In 1989, he married his longtime sweetheart, Meredith Wilfred, also from Fieldsbury. She bared him one son. Oh, bore. What? I'm sorry. She bore him one son. Oh. <laughs> she bore him one son, Philip, born on September 12, 1992. During the period from 1990 to 2030, Mr. Powers owned and operated an appliance store. He retired in order to spend more time with his wife, whose health at that time was not good. Uh, she recovered nicely, and they were very happy up until his death yesterday. The blank of blank. Uh, funeral services will be taken care of by blank mortuary. Penny for your thoughts, dear. Tell you, but if my mother hears me, the whole town will know by tomorrow. You know blank? No, not the one we were talking about yesterday. The other one. The one that wore the different colored socks today. <laughs> well, he asked me to the... to what's coming up at school next week, you know, the blank. Since I was four or five, our parents were really good friends. I was awfully excited and tried not to show it, but he was really nervous and couldn't really hide it. Not only that, but he had an asthma attack right in the middle of it and had to go lie down right after he asked me. It was awfully painful. So I had to pretend like I didn't even know what he was talking about. So I said, dance? What dance? Oops, Ugh, they don't know who it is yet. Anyway, I said, dance? What dance? And then he wheezed a little and said, the dance next week. And I said, no, I'm not going to the dance. Why do you ask? And then his asthma got worse. He may have faked it, though. I'm not really sure. But the rest of the asthma is real, though. <laughs> I've seen it before, and he's not that real good of an actor. <laughs> After about a minute, he said, do you want to go with me? 
And then he held up his hand and turned as if he was going to say, I'll talk to you later. He didn't even wait for a response. Of course I'm going to say yes. I like Andy. I mean blank. Oh no. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Maggie. I have to go tell my mother. Thanks. I'll need it. Bye. All right. I give in. That's it? You quit? I, w I win? Yes. I'm glad. Do you understand why? Yes. I guess I just got a little carried away when I saw that black man fighting with Eddie Codwell. I just assumed it was the black man's fault. And even after I found out the truth and the police came, I just had to take Eddie's side. And when you defended the black man, I... I was your girlfriend. I felt so humiliated fighting with my own boyfriend in front of all of those people. But you were right. It's just, well, you remember when we were little, there was one black man who lived in town for a while? I remember. His name was, well, I don't remember his name, but he was short and he was skinny and he stooped over and we weren't supposed to go too near him. And whenever you saw him, you cried and cried. You were scared of him. No, I wasn't. You weren't? No. Then why did you cry? Because everyone always made jokes. Everyone, especially the adults, would always laugh at him and he would just smile and you knew it was fake, but I never knew which was worse. The jokes to his face or the ones behind his back. But that's in the past and so is this afternoon. You know, we've been married 20 years now and I've never won an argument with you before. You've never been right before. Never? Well, maybe once. Or twice. Hello, I would like to speak to the president. Mr. Nixon, this is your favorite niece, Meredith Wilfred from Fieldsbury, Massachusetts. I just called to tell you that you're doing such a god job being president even though you're getting a peach and all, and I hope things work out. But there are still some things I need to tell you. Can I come to your house on Tuesday? Good. Oh, and can I bring my friend Andrew? He doesn't live here, but he comes to play. You can send him home if you don't like him. Bye! See, I told you. Now can we play a game? No, the president said no. Meredith, why does your nose wrinkle when you say no? Be quiet. But why? Be quiet. Let's say that whenever you say a word, I can hit you. No. That's a word. That's not fair. That's not fair. Don't. Don't. Stop it. Stop it. Be quiet, because when you say something, I can hit you. No. Be quiet. I don't want to. Be quiet, because when you say something, I can hit you. Wait. When you don't say something, I can hit you. No, you don't. Because you just said something, so that means I can hit you! No, because I was just saying something, and you weren't saying anything, so I could hit you! No, you don't! I can hit you because... Stop it! No, ma'am. I, I wasn't letting her cheat. I think she was... Um... I, I think she was trying to look at my watch to... See how much time was left? Time's up. <laughs> well, let's go. Why didn't you let me see your answers? I told you I didn't have enough time to study and I failed because of you. It wouldn't have been right. It wouldn't I... have been right. I would have let you see my answers if you needed to. But Meredith, I don't cheat on tests. Be quiet, I hate you. I had the best grade in that class and now I'm practically failing. Meredith, I just couldn't. Oh, I forgot. You're perfect. You never do anything wrong. I lied for you. I told her you were trying to look at my watch. Oh, that was real quick thinking. A five-year-old could have thought of a better answer than that. Who wouldn't look at your ugly watch anyway? It barely even works. And for that matter, who would want to look at your answers? I should have sat near Elizabeth. At least Elizabeth gets Bs. Oh, I'm sorry. About your watch, I mean. 
It was a Christmas present, wasn't it? It was just a few answers. I would have done it for you. Are we still going to the dance together? Yes, I don't hate you that much. My mother already bought me a dress. <laughs> My mother, uh, we are going to go get shoes. I, I hope I'm not late. What time is it? It's uh, 10 after 3 and 12 seconds. Oh, thanks, I have to hurry. Bye. Bye. Hey! By Meredith Wilson. <laughs> Hating somebody is when you don't like them a lot. It is when you want them to die. <laughs> But not really. I hate Elizabeth Briggs and Martha Shepard and Troy Mari and Andrew Powers and Robert. Yes, ma'am. But there isn't any other part. Well, except I hate Robert Caldwell and Eddie Sarden and Jerry. But I. The end. <laughs> there is another here. Here in the 3 a.m. stillness, in the quiet after and before the cyclone, the hurricane's eye. Here in the 301 stillness, where the darkness silhouettes, a windswept remembrance of you, together, searching for night rainbows. Dear Margaret. Dear Diane. Dear God. I have so many thoughts going through my head right now, I don't know where to begin. Andrew had a little asthma this morning. It had been so long, we didn't recognize it at first. It was far less severe than I remember it being. Anyway, as he lay there on the couch with me comforting him, he looked up at me and said, Darling, will you still love me when I'm old and fat and bald and senile? And I said, you're already old and fat and bald and senile. <laughs> it was a joke, Margaret, but he didn't laugh. He just sat there with this blank expression on his face. And finally, he looked up and said, oh, sitting here at 67 years of age, I'm just 68 next month, I have to pause and wonder what it means to be old. I recently read that by the time a person is age 30, approximately 10,000 of their brain cells die each day. I don't believe it. Doctors do not have all the answers. Uh, not yet. Why, that would mean I have lost approximately 124 million brain cells. That cannot be true. Why, I'm just as lucid today as I was the day that I was born. Thank you for another good day. I played with Robert and his dog Baron from after breakfast to a little before now when it got dark. Remember to bless Robert and his dog Baron, and I want a dog like him too, please. And bless Meredith's swing set, and I want one of those, and um, Andrew's sandbox, and a Robert's cookie jar that's always full. And also, I want Meredith's baby brother who doesn't throw up like mine does. Make that as lucid today as I was the day I graduated high school. You know, there are advantages to being a senior citizen. Uh, for example, uh, Everyone always tells me that I look wonderful. You know, I'm quite determined that one day <laughs> I'm going to dye one half of my hair red <laughs> and the other half bright blue. And, and I will dribble from one corner of my mouth <laughs> and knock out my two front teeth. Oh, and then when Andrew and I walk into the monthly country club social. <laughs> the first man I bump into, he will kiss my hand and say, Meredith, you look as lovely as ever. And bless mother and father and Eddie who pushed Meredith when she called me stupid and Eddie's mother and father who said it was probably an accident. And bless Robert's magnifying glass and could I have one of those? And bless Robert's mother's scarf with a 
burned hole in it where we burned it with the magnifying glass. And also, bless Meredith. I'm sorry she hurted her knees. Bye. I tried to explain to him that it was a joke, but he just sat there with this blank expression on his face that said, sure, it was a joke. He looked so awful that after a while I gave up trying to tell him I was sorry and I just talked to him. I talked about anything that occurred to me. I talked about when we were little and we used to catch squirrels and try to train them. I talked about this time when I was seven and I broke my arm when I fell out of the tree. And for eight weeks, he wore his arm in a sling so that the children wouldn't only stare at me. I even read him this poem I had written. It wasn't very good and I don't think he understood it, but it didn't matter. When I had finished, he looked up at me and said, Meredith, am I really old? Oldness by Meredith Wilfred. When you get old, the first thing that gets old is your brain because you start to like boys. Next, you get wrinkles on your face. Like the ones you had, Mrs. Halby. <laughs> then your hair turns gray. And if you're really old, then it falls out. But don't worry, Mrs. Halby, because your hair is only gray and it's not falling out yet. Also, your teeth fall out and you need a cane to prove to people how old you really are. <laughs> I don't want to get old because of my hair turning gray and liking boys. But I do want to get old so I can live happily ever after and get married and have children. <laughs> the end. Oh, and, and what was that? I was sitting with our granddaughter. She looks more like you every day and tried to tell her a joke. And? I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember it. I couldn't remember a single one. It was going to be a knock-knock joke, like what we used to tell each other when we were young. Don't be ridiculous. We didn't tell each other knock-knock jokes when we were young. Our grandchildren tell them to us. Well, that's not the point. The point is, I couldn't remember a single one. It's a sign of age. Andrew, recently you say Everything is a sign of age. I know. Why do I do that? I fix on something and then can't get it out of my head. It must be a sign of age. Andrew, look, I'm a year older than you are, and I'm not worried, just intrigued. Look, it's getting late, and I'm tired, and you should head to bed too, you know. You'll be tired tomorrow, dear. I'll be in right after I finish this article. <sighs> knock, knock. Who's there? Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe who? Cantaloupe now, sweetie. My father has the ladder. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Tarzan. Tarzan who? Tarzan stripes forever. <laughs> I don't get it. Be quiet. Knock, knock. Who's there? Well, you see, I, I forget. Knock, knock. Who's there? Roses. Roses who? Roses are red. Knock, knock. Who's there? Roses are red and. Roses are red and who? Roses are red and violets are blue. Knock, knock. Who's there? The monster. The monster who? The monster with the big green eyes. You dummy. Aw, <laughs> uh, this is silly. We didn't have knock-knock jokes when I was a kid. Be quiet. Knock-knock. Uh, 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 who's there? Banana. Who? I mean, knock-knock. Who's there? Asthma. Asthma who? Asthma eyes long for you, so does my heart. Knock-knock. <laughs> Coming. This is a good one. Knock-knock. Who's there? Shelly. Shelly who? She'll leach peanut before you eat it, or you'll choke. <laughs> you get it? No? Knock, knock. Who's there? Olive. Olive who? Olive you. Wake up, dear. What? Wake up. Now, you were sleeping. Now 
now come to bed. That was me you were dreaming about, <laughs> wasn't it, Angie? <laughs> Thelma Taylor looked good at the bake sale today. What? Thelma. She's been looking sad lately, and today she looked better. Andrew, sometimes I honestly think you do it to annoy me. Do what? Talk about other women, especially ones you know are interested in you. She's not interested in me. Oh, yes, she is. She can't oh, be. Wait a minute. I'm just saying I'm glad an attractive woman like She's not attractive. She's, she's ugly. She's ugly, and she kicks dogs. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's true. I saw her the other day kicking this poor little dog that just wanted to be petted. She and that Martha Shepherd make me furious. They're always flirting around, especially with you. And Martha's married. For goodness sake. <laughs> you know what I said to Thelma when I saw her kicking that poor little ball of fur? Quick, Thelma, pass it over here. <laughs> no! I said you stop that right now! That dog never did anything to you! And it's about time you stopped thinking only of yourself and started to consider the rights of others! You said that? No! But I wanted to! And I also wanted to tell her that she better stop being such a hussy and that her breath stank and that's probably why her fiancé left her right, and Wait a minute. That was got some things wrong with her, but be careful not to be too mean. I mean, she's a good person even if she does hog the ball. Well, you better just make sure she doesn't score any points. But you were right. I was unkind to her and unfair to you. You know, you teach me things. I mean, I'm so much smarter, but you still teach me things. Actually, I think it's mutual. Oh? Yes, like that joke you made just now. I don't think you would have made that or would have been able to make that 10 years ago. It's, well, I learn a lot from you and I have a lot to learn. Hey, Thelma, pass it over here. We both do. Meredith, we've known each other for what? 63, 64 years now. Yes. In all that. If you had to pick one memory in all of that time, what, what would it be? In all that time? Well, I'd have to think about that for a little bit. Uh, why don't you go first? Uh, I'm not sure. I know I've never been happier than I was on our wedding day. Oh, I've been as happy, just never happier. <laughs> it's strange, really. I've been able to remember the wedding very well. I was rather dazed, in a nice sort of way, but I remember the reception vividly. That I have tried to forget. With my mother's knee, you mean? Yes. There you were, talking to the guys <laughs> with your hand on my mother's knee. I thought it was yours. You were both wearing white. Oh, yes. And only 30 years difference in between us. Anybody could have made a mistake. It wasn't just a mistake. It was bad enough that your hand was on her knee. But then you started creeping toward her thigh. <laughs> she, she never forgave me. I never forgave you. It wasn't that bad. I don't know. All I know is it's a real good thing she didn't come to the hotel room. <laughs> Meredith, you're off the subject. You were going to pick a memory. You're right. Well, I'm still having trouble thinking of one. So, and the wedding is too, is too obvious. <laughs> so, uh, think of another one. I guess it would be the play we read. <laughs> you were in 10th grade and I was in 11th. <laughs> well, let's just say if it weren't for your uncle being the drama director, 
We never would have gotten parts. Maybe not so lucky. <laughs> The king is dead! Yes, our dog king is dead. But luckily the king of the Netherlands is still alive and prospering. But tell me, what was it that you really came here to say? The ring. The ring is lost and if not returned within seven days, then the king will die. <laughs> It wasn't all my fault, you know. It was a really big part, and I only had six weeks to learn the lines. You can't talk. You can't do anything except what I think. That's what you think. That's what I said. No, that's what you thought. You listen to me, or I'll... Or you'll what? After all, I'm only a memory. Wake up, dear. What? Wake up. You were daydreaming. I guess you're right. I've changed my mind. If I have to pick a memory, it won't be from, ch from childhood. And why is that? Well, you were mean to me sometimes. <laughs> Was I? Uh, sometimes. For example? <laughs> when you wouldn't come near me for a week because you said I kissed the doll <laughs> on the lips. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did not. You did too. I did not. You did too. I saw you. You made me. No. You said if I didn't, you would tell Robert not to like me. No, because... Meredith, be quiet. You're not the boss of me. Why should I? Because I said so. No, because you thought so. <laughs> After all, I'm only memory. Have you thought of a memory yet? What? Be quiet. You wake our friends. I said, have you thought of a memory yet? Not yet. <clears throat> Though, I do remember a party, a surprise party, for my 44th birthday. That was a nice party, though maybe not so nice a year. The fights, you mean? I wouldn't call them fights, so much as loud arguments, but they were serious. Maybe not always so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Shepherd can move one buttock independently of the other. Where did that come from? Nowhere, just a comment of general interest. What are you talking about? Nothing. I'm just, you were sitting there looking bored. So I thought I would mention a rather unusual ability of Martha Shepherd's. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing, but it's true. I notice it when we dance at the club. She rocks back and forth, leaning on Jonathan, but her buttocks move up and down like little pistons. <laughs> Not only that, but... but since when have you taken into staring at Martha Shepherd's fanny? Wait a minute. I didn't expect you to be mad or anything. What did you expect? Raving about some other woman's rear end? I wasn't raving about some other woman's rear end. I was just saying it's really strange the way she can move them. If she's really enjoying herself, her right buttock moves left and right sideways, but her left one stays perfectly still. Would you be quiet? Once, she kind of waved at me. <laughs> you are so... You know... That was a little bit funny. Wait, that's not what happened. You stayed angry for three days. I know, but I now see that I was being unreasonable. <laughs> Besides, it was innocent enough, your comment. That's what you thought. No, that's what you think. After all, I'm only a memory. Have you thought of yours yet? No. Neither have I. It's... Harder than I thought it would be. I wonder why that is. <laughs> There's so much to choose from. You're right. You know, just thinking about it, it puts a funny feeling in my stomach. Hmm. Hunger. You know what I mean. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean. And it's only 
5.30. Already? What's for dinner? Dinner? I thought you were taking me out to dinner. <laughs> Coming this summer, from the director and producer of The Vase, comes his newest comedy, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as Felix Unger, Oscar, 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 and Tyler Perry as Oscar Madison, and his mother? What you doing to my baby? That's right, a new spin on a classic comedy. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Tyler Perry are the odd couple. Coming to a theater near you. And now, our feature presentation. Hi, my name's Diego. I just turned 18, and I'm about to get a letter that changed my life. Do you want to help me open the letter? You do? Great! Okay, now on the count of three, we'll open the letter. One, two, three! Open! Oh, yeah! You guys did it! Thanks! Let's see what it says. You've been drafted, Diego. Good luck. Wow, guys, I need to think. I should go to Nick. He always gives good advice. Can you help me to Nick's house? Is it this way? No. No? Well, what about this way? Thanks. Ryan, you're here, good. Did you bring the super? Wait, Diego, what are you doing here? Hi, Nick. Well, I need your help, I need to- Whoa, 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 Diego. I gotta go, I don't have time for this. I just broke my mom's favorite phase. Ryan's gonna come over here and help me fix it. I gotta go. Great, thanks, Nick. I should go home and start packing. All right, guys, it's time to pack. So I have my underwear, my socks, my pants, my toothbrush, deodorant, and a comb. Am I forgetting anything? <gasps> a snack! Good thing I always keep one close by. Let's get that in there, and there we go. We're... Hey, what's that? It looks like it's a letter from Dora. Should we read it? Great! Let's see what it says! Well, it says... Hi, Diego. It's Dora. Me and Boots are having a great time in Vietnam. We're taking photographs. I love pictures. And she says it's been going great until Boots said, I'm tired of following my dreams. I'm just gonna see where they're going and see if I can hang with them later. What a silly monkey. Well, anyways, she says that he's gone AWOL, whatever that means. And that she misses me, can't wait to see me, and loves me. Thanks, Dora. Hey, guys, I just want to say thanks. You've helped me and Dora on tons of adventures. And don't worry, I'll be back soon. And we'll go on a ton more. But until then... Thanks.
I remember the first time I felt Jewish. I remember when my brother joined the cause. I remember when I realized that my parents didn't have all the answers. We lived in Nuremberg, just Nobody me and my parents in a little apartment, yes. and my cousin you Benjamin came to visit. I was trying to do my all about to have a stuck on this now, because there was an father who usually helps me with the efforts of our people. Well, he looked at this problem and didn't know what to tell me. SS is full of even stronger men, like my brother. My aunt and uncle's families are more religious than us. I stared at him in shock because he had always had an answer. And then on Sunday, we were walking home from our church service, and I was trying to remember how this Bible verse went, but Father couldn't tell me. We celebrate the holidays, but My I don't always know what they're about. See in a post I'm more He'd always have the answer to me. Like Not this time. Are the questions really getting that much harder? Germany faced a time of great political change and upheaval in the 1930s. As many places have been many times. Hitler took the stage as fear of the Third Reich. He claimed he would restore the glory of the German people on the world stage. But that's not what this play is about. No, not really. Influential men were busy making influential decisions, which changed the course of history. But that's not what this play is about. No, not really. Hitler's Nazi party would unleash a holocaust of death across Europe like none the world can remember seeing. But that's not what this play is about. Not really. Change only comes about in the minds and hearts of people, not in laws or legislation. Power and fear can rule the lives of everyone. And that's kind of what this play is about. It's really a play about some kids trying to grow up. And they happen to be living in Nazi Germany. Like everyone, they have stories to tell. I never really thought about my culture growing up. I am German, but my family is also Jewish. We celebrate the holidays. My father says prayers, tells stories, and each holiday ends with great food. My aunts and uncles' families are more religious than us. We don't go to temple that often. I never really thought about it growing up. But recently, this question about being Jews is, is everywhere. It's all anyone's talking about. I definitely know that I am Jewish, and it's apparently something I need to be aware of. There's no chance of ignoring it. When I walk down the street to run errands for my mother, I see these horrible cartoons of Jews. They show Jews stealing from Germans. They show Jews as criminals. I don't know much about the Jewish people, but I know I'm not what those pictures show. I'm not. I have this anxiety that someone will see me while I'm walking down the street and say, hey, it's a Jew, get her. It's scary. Do people see these cartoons in their heads when they see me on the street? I live in Berlin with my parents and baby sister. Berlin is one of the most important cities in the world. There are always things happening and things to talk about. I am very lucky to go to a private school, and I have good teachers and classmates from well-off families. I used to have Jewish girls in my classes. I didn't notice everything that was wrong with them because I was just a kid. When the Jewish kids in my class finally stopped attending, I was relieved. My teacher, Frau Strahn, said that the Jewish kids smelled weird, and they dragged the pace of our class. Even Frau Strahn said so. I feel better off without them. I'm glad you could be here, David. It means a lot. It's opportune that my woman could leave from the SS corresponded with your graduation from senior Hitler Youth. It's a big day. I wish you could have been here for my church confirmation, too. This is more important. Now, you shouldn't ignore the heel. The whole town will be there. You are ready for the ceremony. The junior youth was fun and all, but I can't wait for all the activities we get to do now. The camping trips and seminars. What's it like being in the SS? It's a serious and important duty that makes you feel fulfilled. I could have been a part of the army like everyone else. But I'm more valuable because I joined the SS. All my comrades are outstanding. I'm sure you work harder. Let me hear your speech. You must recite it perfectly for the ceremony. I'm going to be saying it along with all the other boys. I just have to get through it. That's the wrong attitude. You must know it by heart. That's the only way to be the best. You have to watch out for other boys and their attitudes. If they are weak and lazy, they will bring you down. You must decide to be the best. I will be the best. What will you do when you're running exercises and one of your friends isn't up to par? I'll help them to be better. But only
only way to do that is to push it in his face. Do you remember when we stayed at Uncle Hans' farm? He let us help the harvest. Our cousin Kirk was lazy and broke the machinery. So, Uncle Hans let me work the machinery. He made Hans do all the same work by hand. He learned that day that same lesson all my comrades learned in training. That to push the weak ones down to the ground. If they don't measure up, then forget them. They don't deserve to exist. Some of them grow backbone. Then you helped. Now, let me hear your speech. Young people stand here on the threshold of our lives. We enter joyfully through an open door. Stop. Start over. Young people stand here on the threshold of our lives. We enter joyfully through an open door. We face our fate courageously, for while fate defeats the cowardly, God helps the brave. We, the youth, are the bridge from ancestors to grandchildren. Now let banners fly. Als der Müden und niemals vertragen und niemals verzeihen. I read the newspapers. My friends don't concern themselves with the news, but I've decided it's important to know something about the world. It makes me more cultured. I want a very intelligent husband one day, and knowing more about the world's affairs will make me extra appealing. My parents are so backwards, they don't keep up. Last month, Hitler and the Nazi party met in Nuremberg to pronounce new laws about the Jews. People are complaining that the Jews are getting in the way of our progress, so the government has pronounced new laws for the protection of German blood and German honor. These laws also outlaw marriages between Germans and Jews, but why anyone would want to marry a Jew is beyond me. Adolf Hitler came to my hometown for the Nazi party meeting at the Reichstag, and he announced the new laws for Jews in Germany. My father's friends, who are doctors and lawyers, are losing their work. My father is a locksmith, so he gets to keep his work. I'm not allowed to go to libraries, beaches, or any public parks anymore, but, but I still get to go to school. My father says I am lucky, but I don't feel lucky. I just started high school, and it feels like everyone is against me. Grade school was really problem-free for me. I was one of the smarter girls in the class. Not, not the very smartest, but I did well. And I'm a fast runner, and I have a nice singing voice, and I'm fairly talented at drawing. But I don't feel like doing anything anymore. I don't sing. And I never draw. But I do think I should keep up my athletics. I never know when I'm going to need to run. Mother, why don't we have a picture of Adolf Hitler on our table? I don't know. Why should we? I notice at my friends' houses that they often have a portrait of the Fuhrer on their table or above their sofa. It's weird to not have one. Are you and father against the government? No, Mara, your father is not against the government. Adolf Hitler is very popular right now, and I'm sure he is for very good reasons. I just don't see the need to worship him the way the others do. Ever since you were born, it's been one political party and then another. Your father's a very hard-working man, and he doesn't have time to get attached to politics. But it does seem Adolf Hitler's Nazi party is really making their presence known. I am proud to be German. I'm very proud to be German, too. Would it be all right if we got a portrait of the Fuhrer, even just to put up when we have company? I don't want my friends to think I'm weird when they come over after youth meeting. There's no harm in it. Sure, Mary, we can put a picture of the Fuhrer on the table. There's nothing more fun than the hip youth. I look forward to it even more than I do school. I'm smart, and I used to want to be a teacher, study history. But now even my favorite subject fades in comparison to the youth group. When we're lucky, in summer months, our leaders take us out on these big camping trips. We row big boats out to an island for a campfire. Everyone has a job and a place. I volunteer to chop the firewood. It's the best job. I love the way the hatchet feels as it crashes through the wood. 
I'm getting stronger. Not as strong as my brother, but stronger. I see the difference in myself, so I work harder. And the girls in school notice how I've been excelling. I'm sitting in class, and my teacher, Mr. Smith, is asking us questions on the reading we did the night before. I raise my hand because I know the answer, and he calls on someone else. Every time I raise my hand, he, he never calls on me. Mr. Smith taught my mother and my older sister, but I've only been in this class for a month, and I can't tell why he never calls on me. And I know the answer, and I'm so fed up that I speak without being called on. Mr. Smith, I know the answer! Keep quiet, Rebecca. You are a guest in our country. I am a guest in this country. I, I'm German, just like everyone else in the class. I've always been. I stay quiet the rest of the day. I don't have any answers. It feels like class will never end. Keep after Rebecca. I will speak with you. I wonder if maybe he wants to apologize. Rebecca, from now on, you are going to sit in the front of the room to my side over there. I don't want you to contaminate the Aryan children. You are not to speak out of turn again. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You are not to participate until I instruct you to. My classroom is a place of learning, and our progress will not be stopped by your poor behavior. You look so nice in your uniform, Ernst. It's the same uniform all the other boys wear. Yours fits so well. You're stronger than the other boys. I don't like to brag. There's nothing wrong with being the best. I'm proud when I see you doing all of your exercises in the square. Everything comes easy. I try my hardest, as we all should. My brother David is such a good soldier. I want to be just like him. I think you're the best. Doesn't that matter to you? Of course. All the girls at school talk about you. Do they? You never show any interest in them, which only makes them talk more. Let them talk. As long as you're the best, I'm sure they will. Are you jealous of you? Because you live next door to me and you walk me home before going to youth meetings? I'm sure of it. Let them be jealous. You're my favorite. Really, Ernst? You aren't just saying that to flatter me? You're everything I want. You're strong and filled with determination and German spirit. You're almost perfect. Almost? If only you were blonde and blue-eyed like your brother, you'd be the perfect Aryan German. But don't worry, Ernst. I still like you, and I'm glad you feel the same way about me. I love when you walk me home. One time every week, we all go to the auditorium to hear a speech. It's played over the radio, and it's usually by someone very famous, often Hitler. Me and the rest of the Jews have to sit in the back, away from the rest of the girls on our own bench. It's mandatory, and, and there's no way of getting out of it. And in every speech, the speaker says something against the Jews, and, and every time the entire school looks back at us to see our reaction. You can't let them know they're winning. You have to defend yourself. You have to maintain your dignity in any way you can. I worry that my family isn't German enough. I go to meetings for the League of German Girls when I can. They're very fun and very interesting. My friends understand me much better than my mother and father do, but they were born in such a different time. How could they understand? Mary, I want that picture off the table. But Papa, can't we keep it up? Why should we? We'd be the only house without one. That's hardly a reason. But everyone knows that Things are so complicated, we don't need politics in our home. But can't we keep it up for company? I would be so embarrassed if they came over and we didn't have anything. Everyone had something to show their pride. Please, what would my friends think? I guess keeping up appearances is more important. Why can't he be like my friend's fathers? My life is horrible. No one listens to me or understands me. My mother doesn't and my father doesn't. They're too busy arguing. They didn't used to fight, at least I don't think they did. They might just be good at hiding it. it. Seems everyone in my family is good at hiding. You 
smell awful. I don't want to be anywhere near you. You stink like every other Jew. Our country needs to get rid of you and everyone like you. You are an evil snake, feeding on everything good our country could have. You are selfish and greedy. Everyone knows it. You are wicked. Rebecca, you're showing. Try again, Sarah. You are not even human, you vermin. Your nose is hooked and your eyes bulge out. I can tell you smell like filthy garbage from just looking at you. You're showing, Rebecca. I can see it behind your eyes. But my mouth doesn't show anymore, right? No, you're doing fine with your mouth. Okay, try again, sir. I, I can do this. You are so evil, I have to pray whenever you're near me for fear that I will burn in hell by standing in your very presence. That's it, Rebecca. I didn't see it at all. You did really well. Can you try me? I don't think I can practice any more this afternoon. Come on, Rebecca. You're better at it than me. My hands and legs still shake. I can keep my face blank, but my legs just buckle. It makes it impossible to walk down the street. Just try. We are going to get you. All the boys in the Hitler Youth are going to get you as you go to school. We will beat you to the ground and, and no one will miss you. I can see in your hand, Sarah. Take a deep breath. More. More? I have to get better at it. We can't let the kids at school have the satisfaction of hurting us. Maybe if we get good enough at it, it will stop. You are so worthless. Your family is a guest in our country. You don't belong here. The only place you belong is dead in the graveyard. You are the worst kind of Jew. A Jew who doesn't know she's a Jew. I don't know any Jews. Out here in the countryside, a lot of people are farmers. Jews dwell in cities to take money from our government. They're not strong enough for agricultural work. I'm sure if I did know one, I wouldn't like them. They're among the pathetic and feeble people who are trying to hurt Germany. Anyone who's not making Germany better should go. I had a nightmare. When I woke up, it wasn't a nightmare at all. I just keep dreaming about everything that's happened lately. All over Austria and Germany, there's been riots for two days. I've stayed in at home, sleeping on the floor of my parents' bedroom. I feel like a baby to be so afraid, but the destruction is terrible. In the night, homes and businesses were destroyed. The synagogue that we go to was burned to the ground by SS soldiers. They're saying that every synagogue in Germany has been destroyed. In some cities, the Hitler Youth have been part of the attack. Boys younger than me! The lock shop and the bakery on my street has had its window smashed in, and, and further into the town you can really see the destruction. As you walk down the street, you find pieces of glass. Charged from the windows of the homes of Jews. My mother and father are trying to count how many of their friends have been taken away. They're calling it Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. Apparently, some Polish Jew killed a diplomat, and the Nazis sent out word that it was time to attack. My father is a locksmith, and he builds locks for his job. I have always felt safe in our house because I knew he put the best locks on it. Those locks, they help me sleep at night. But now I don't even think locks will keep the Nazis out. Locks won't help. We need to do something. Someone has to. 
I believe it in my heart that the Klein family and other Jews won't survive unless people, people like us, normal people with a little bit of power in our reach, must do something. It's what God would want us to do. God. You're making this decision because of God. They don't believe what we believe. I need to believe that there are people out there that will do good and prevent the suffering of others. I'm sure I don't want anyone to suffer. Then this is what we will do. We don't know that they're suffering. Each newspaper says something different. All we know is that people are going to camps and ghettos to work. Everything else is just a rumor. It can't be that bad. For the destruction and the disappearances of the last several weeks? What if things are truly bad? What if they are? If they are, then our family will be in danger. Are you going to do that to us? To the girls? They will catch you in this stupid plan. They won't. And what if they do? And they take us away and our lives are ruined. The kind of danger you will be putting us in. Fear cannot stop us. I have a faith that tells me not to fear. I can't let you do this to us. You are my wife and the mother of my children, and I hope you will follow in my decision. We cannot afford the risk! We can't afford not to do this! What kind of world will our children grow up in? One in which they are safe. Father, I agree with Mother. This is not your decision, Mary. It's for the best. You don't care about us. You don't care about me or, or Mother or anyone. I care about you very much, Mary. I love you. But I also care about the people who I see in danger. They're not people. Mr. Klein and I went to school together. You know his wife and his two sons. They're good, smart boys. Everyone knows that the Jews are a problem. It's on the radio and in the newspapers, and everyone has been talking about it for years, Father. I've learned about it in school. You're so backwards, you don't understand anything. A daughter does not speak to her father that way. Well, I do, because you don't listen to anyone but yourself. The girls in my school keep leaving this magazine called Fair Sturmer on my desk before class. It's a magazine by Julius Sleeker, and it shows evil pictures of Jews. My father says it's been around since my before I was born, but, but now it's everywhere. And, and the pictures are even worse than the posters. They show Jews killing babies and Jews killing Jesus, and, and some even have cartoons of evil Jewish monsters attacking naked Aryan women. I can't help but look inside and stare at the pictures and articles. And I am angry because I am not these things. And, and my parents are not these things. I know it is all a lie, but I doubt myself. I am not these things. Or maybe I'm not good enough. all have a little club because we have the most handsome boys to walk us home. Are you not friends with Sonia anymore? Sonia is a problem. Helen's mother told us that Sonia's father used to be a communist, and we all agreed we don't need that kind of influence polluting our lives. She's so backwards, the way she dresses and the way she talks. I always thought she was nice, but I didn't know about her father. You wouldn't ever be interested in a girl like that, No, I you? suppose not. What are you saying, Ernst? Could you really befriend the daughter of a communist? That's not at all like you. You're the boy that knows everything in class, and you don't see what an awful person Sonia is? She doesn't even attend the League of German Girls meetings regularly with the rest of us. You used to be so close to her. To think I played dolls at her house. With her father's affiliations? It makes me sick. Invite her to a meeting, instead of just dismissing her. Her father is against everything we stand for, which means she really can't be trusted. I don't like this attitude, Ernst. It's really anti-German and very unattractive. You need to consider what's best for your country. Just because you're from the perfect German family doesn't mean you're immune to all of the disgusting influences of the corrupt. You're right. Of course you're right. If you ever speak to her again, I'll never speak to you again. And I'll tell everyone why. Including our family. I just didn't know about Sonia. You don't have to worry. Our country needs strong men with strong morals. I want the boy with the right point of view. You got him. Papa, I I'm sorry I raised my voice. I, I know that you care about me. Thank you, Mary. You're my daughter and I love you. But you really shouldn't listen to me. 
I just, I don't think you're right to try to hide Jews in our house. Sometimes the world asks difficult things of us. But everyone knows Sometimes that Sometimes you, you can't listen to what everyone else says. Sometimes you have to choose to listen to yourself. I've made that choice, and our family will follow what I say. I don't understand why you have to be the hero. No, not a hero. Hiding a family in our home while the others are being deported, and the SS is combing the streets to capture them, it takes bravery. But it's not heroic, and it's not for show. Imagine if we were in their situation, and our family was being murdered for no reason other than hatred towards our ancestors. But aren't you putting us in their shoes by hiding them in our house? Yes, but it's the only decent thing to do. But none of my classmates or friends' families are doing this. Are you saying that they're all indecent? Because that is ridiculous. Everyone does what they believe they must do to get by. Sometimes things are chosen for us, but other times we get to make that choice. I've made the choice to see the Jews in our country as human beings in danger, even if the consequence is dangerous. And I'm asking you to make that choice. I'm the strongest boy in my section at the Hitler Youth. I tie the tightest knots. When I grab the oars, I'm the strongest rower in the boat. I chop the wood twice as fast at our campfires. I have the prettiest girl in school as my sweetheart, and she thinks I'm the best. And I'm from a great family. But sometimes I get mad at myself for not feeling like the best at all times. High school's almost over, and I can do whatever I want with my life when I graduate. I've got great grades, so I could go to university. Or I could join the German army and protect my country's honor. Or I could follow in David's footsteps and join the SS, the elite services to the Nazi party. I would be so important. I would have so much power. People are always telling me what to do, how to be, how to stand like a soldier, how to be the best German that I can be. And as far as anyone else can tell, these things come relatively easy to me. It's easy enough to fit in if you don't choose to stand out. I feel the pride of my people and my family, but I just feel like I'll never measure up. If you put me on a poster and said to little boys, this is what you must aspire to be. I could look the part, but, but will I ever feel it? I see the other boys. I know that they feel it. They feel that pride. There's nothing to be afraid of if it's you're the best German that you can be. My only fear is that they'll find me out. And I haven't even done anything wrong. I don't know what I did to deserve this. If I were born to a different family, or if I wasn't born at all. I don't mean that. I I love my parents. I, I just don't even think they know what to do anymore. It sometimes seems like they're more afraid than I am. And, and that's scary. But you can't let them see it. I'm learning how to keep my face and my body still. And to keep control of the only thing I can control. Myself. I will get through this. I don't know much about the Jewish people, not really. The synagogue that I would have gone to for services and classes was destroyed. But, but I do know we are a people who survives. At least that's what I'm told. They may be able to destroy the locks on our doors, but they won't destroy my spirit. Now the Klein family is moving in with us. Don't they know how much danger they're putting us in? The SS is going around and taking these people, especially the men, on trains. But, but they get to keep their things with them in suitcases. And they usually get a notice ahead of time. I don't want anything bad to happen to the Kleins. I'm just, I'm terrified of being treated like a Jew if they find out that we're hiding some. That little portrait of the Fuhrer still sits on our table. I, I was going to take it down because it felt like a lie to keep it up while we were hiding these Jews in our house, but my mother told me to keep it up for protection. That little portrait of Adolf Hitler helps my mother feel safe, but I'm not sure anymore. The Stahl was only the beginning of the organized exploitation, torture, and annihilation of the Jewish people in Germany and all of Europe. 
By 1939, Germany had annexed Austria, occupied Czechoslovakia, and invaded Poland. England and France declared war on Germany, and World War II began. During the Holocaust, over six million human beings were systematically and deliberately murdered simply because they were Jews. I'll never forget the day I joined the SS and began protecting my country's honor. I'll never forget the night the SS came, searched, and left empty-handed. I'll never forget the looks on the clients' faces. They were so grateful. I'll never forget the moment when they came for us. Can I Wow, a talent show! I'm gonna tell all my friends! Guys, I'm telling you, I could eat a whole bag of onions in 30 seconds. It's not possible! You can't eat a whole bag I, of onions I, in 30 seconds! Look, it's not possible. I can do it! I, I'll, I'll hey guys, it. guys! Hey, the talent show's coming up. What do you think? Do I have a chance of winning? Uh, I don't know, little Bobby. What the heck's gonna be your talent? I can play the kazoo. Check out my ball and jams. That stinks worse than onion sauteed in feces with a side of Chinese food. Oh, nice no. bird! It would take frickin' Elvis to get you some talent. Oh. I can do it. I, I will show you. Bob Gold's Club Bake Sale. 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 Bob Gold's Club Bake Magic. Hey, say, what do I pay? Only five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars? Do you accept credit cards? Yes, I do. Here you go, mister. Hot dog, thanks. Now, what to do about that talent show? Hey, guys. Hey, little Bobby. Uh, G over here is going to eat a whole bag of onions. Want to come? I'm going to eat all these! Nah. You're not thinking stuff to do for that talent show, are you? <laughs> More like lame show. <laughs> Sick bird, <Nice>. dude! <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm sick of following my dreams. I'm just gonna find out where they're going and hook up with them later. Go, 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 go. But first, a banana! Whoa! Oh, I'm finally free. Hey, you must be the kid who's helping the town shoot. How do you know that? Send the prophecy, kid. Now quit wasting time and show me what you got. Uh, looks like you need some work to do. Wax on, wax off. What does that have to do with being Elvis? Wax on, wax off. Okay. Wax on, wax off. All this aggravation ain't satisfaction in me. A little more fight, a little less fun. A little less fight, a little more spark. Close your mouth and open up your heart. Maybe say it's my baby. And it's my baby. You got kid. You're already. And now, with his Elvis impersonation, please welcome Little Bobby.
You're the one, man. You're the one. It all. I have no <laughs> idea, dude. Well, that's the perfect reason to be here. You see, we're all searching for such different things. Maybe you're searching for that special someone who's funny. Who smells nice. Who's safe, secure. Adventurous, wild, feral. Who's my opposite. Who's exactly like me. Who's the most perfect person in the world who can put up with me. Well, you're definitely in the right place. I'm sure you're all itching to get started. Our biological clocks are ticking. So, without further ado... Uh, hi, I hope I'm not a... Laura? John, hi. Oh, Laura, hi. Hi, I, I haven't seen you in... God, years. It's, it's been a long... Time. Yeah, it's been a long time. Time. Um, <laughs> how's Nancy? Uh, Nancy, I, I, I don't want to talk. How's Michael? Martin. We broke up. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Hi, I'm, I'm looking for the perfect guy. You look like the perfect guy. 
Someone who's everything I'm looking for. You know, you really are my type. What do you do for a living? I'm a plumber. Oh. I, uh, I mean, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a stockbroker. I'm a, a doctor. I'm a, a butcher, a, a baker, a candlestick maker. Here, jazz musician? No, not in the jazz. Okay, d d did I already say doctor? Because I am an excellent surgeon. Surgeon? Okay. S soldier? Soldier? No. All right. Soldier. Military. V veteran. Vet. Veterinary. I'm a veterinary. Oh, I love animals. Oh, me too. I mean, I think I do. I should. Who doesn't? I mean, dogs. Except dogs. I can't stand dogs. Yeah, dogs are. Dogs are horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people hate cats, but I think they're fantastic. Oh, me too. I love cats. I have a million cats. But I'm definitely allergic. A few cats that I keep with my neighbors. I could never date anyone with cats. One cat, terminally ill, probably gonna die today. In fact, uh, uh, let me just check the time. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's dead. Mm -hmm. You must be devastated. Hmm? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, devastated. <laughs> you can cry. I love a man who can show his emotions. Well, that's good because I cry a lot. Yes, poor Fluffy Muffin, she was my life. <laughs> oh, no. You're not one of those people who makes a pet their whole life, are you? You don't have one of those, I don't need people because I have a pet complex as dude. Wait, no, 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 no. I, I don't care. Who cares about animals? Oh, I get it. You're one of those, I don't need anyone kind of guys. Oh, look, you don't understand. I'm a people needer. I need people. Sorry, I don't date needy guys. Shorts. That, that makes you the odd man out. Uh, yeah. No, 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 I didn't, I didn't mean to say we're odd. No, odd's just a figure of speech. Uh, please don't cry. I, I hate to see you cry. It's just, it's, just, it's just I'm not here to date. Um, I'm here to facilitate. It's just I'm really, I'm not looking for a clown. A boyfriend right now. Um, no, I know, I know. We'll make a group of three, all right? We'll make, we'll make a group of three. What? Um, Three, um, uh, milking a cow, um, uh, 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 driving, three, third, third wheel, third wheel. No, 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 no. You wouldn't be a third wheel. Um, oh, no, I love your, your big feet, and I want a curly hair. Do you like that? Uh, uh, please don't cry. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I did need a new scarf. That it, 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 um, 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 uh, oh, um, don't die on me, buddy. What I don't need right now is a dead clown. Well, it was it was nice to meet you. Um, I think we're out of time. It's just I am. Well, flowers, they're very sweet. Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> Listen here, <laughs> jerk! No! No, please don't cry. I think you me. That's all. Look, you're very funny. You're a very funny clown. And that's the number one thing, a sense of humor. It's really the number one... <laughs> Are you a suicidal clown? Well, well, that's unfortunate. Um, no, no, please, please don't be upset. Um, you know, you know, I can make you laugh. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll make you laugh. Um, <sighs> do, 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 circus. Do, 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 afro circus. Afro circus. Afro polka dot. Polka dot. Polka dot. Francois. Oh, is that Fred? 
French, I think that's such a romantic. Miss Antille. Sorry? Smell me. Don't apologize. Oh, uh, uh, no, I, I can't. Um, <laughs> allergies. You are allergic to love. No, no, to cologne. Wow, you are wearing Scent a lot. is the essence of attraction. <coughs> we are animals. We <coughs> smell. <coughs> and we love. Be the animal you are. Are you okay? I think I'm having an asthma attack. You are repulsed by me, yes. No, no, I wouldn't say repulsed. It's not that, it's just... Repulsion. <laughs> is a kind of attraction. Yes, my little meerkat. Uh, no, yes, maybe, uh... No, definitely not. I will take you out tonight on a romantic Italian dinner. Sorry, allergy. Are you allergic to romance or to dinner? Uh, to me, it upsets my... Seafood, uh, oysters. They are not so easy. Selfish. I keep kosher. Chocolate fondue. Uh, chocolate makes me... Uh, How about the roll in the hay? Hay fever? Skydiving. I'm allergic to air. You are allergic to life. No, no, life, I wouldn't say that. It's just... The body doesn't lie. I smell you. And I know you are for me. Listen here, mister. I just don't think you're my type. Oh, oh my God, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. That was, that was an accident. That was very rude. Mm. I'm very, I'm very sorry. It's, it's just that I, it's just that I, kiss me. What am I saying? You had me at, hello. Everything I yes. don't think I want to know yeah, everything. Yeah, I, I'm recently D I B O R C E. Oh, well, uh, that's fine. Yeah, you say that, but inside you're thinking, what's wrong with her? I'm not really. Uh, well, don't you wonder why he left me? I, I mean, maybe I'm an ice queen or I have some terminal disease and he just couldn't cope. Um, not really, no. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe I left him and I'm an adulterer or, or a workaholic or an alcoholic or a shopaholic or a chocoholic or a million other holics. I mean, there's a plethora of things wrong with me. I belong in a secondhand shop with a big sign on my forehead that says, defective, <laughs> divorced. Defective, damaged, it's all the same thing, really. <laughs> well, uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Excuse me? Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 I didn't mean anything like that. It's just like... Bell! Oh, Where's the bell? No, 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 I'm just saying for every beautiful person out there, there's someone who's sick of their crap. Why did your last girlfriend leave you? Um, that's <laughs> personal, I just met you. You mean that you're embarrassed to say? Wait, <laughs> look. Who said you have to stay with one person your whole life? Who made up that rule? You're afraid of commitment. No, I'm saying there's nothing wrong with you because you're divorced. Okay, look. I love being alone, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. More than anything. Well, here's to being alone. To being solo. Content. Happy. A lone wolf. I love being alone. Oh! <laughs> to you, do you want to have coffee sometime? Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, Sean. Laura. Uh, I, I dated a girl named Laura once. But that's cool. Um, I like your tie. Oh, thank you. Uh, Cynthia got it for me. Oh, um, Cynthia, is that your... Uh, my ex. Oh, um, uh, recent? Oh, no, it's, it's been years. Oh, well, well that's good, because sometimes people can get kind of hung up, and that's... Five years, 37 days, six hours, and 32 minutes since we broke up. 
but I'm ready. I, I'm ready to date. I'm, I'm ready to jump back in that dating pool, and I know that it's a shallow pool, well, but Well, sometimes I, you just gotta dive in. What did you say? Well, well, sometimes you, you just, just gotta, gotta dive, dive in. in. Michelle used to say that. Michelle, is that your... Oh, uh, my uh, ex, 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 <laughs> ex a whole week. <laughs> Um, well, do you like to travel? Oh, yes. Michelle speaks. She spoke six languages. We went to Europe and... Have you ever been to Paris? Let me guess. Michelle loves Paris? No. No. Lucy loves Paris. <laughs> Lucy. And is she your... Oh, my girlfriend before Michelle, before Cynthia. Lucy, the model. She was Italian. I hate Italy. Uh, so did Abigail, and uh, Anna wasn't fond of it either. Okay, um, I don't really know how to say this politely. Um, I just, I really don't want to talk about Anna. Neither did Maggie. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Anna. Or Maggie. Or Michelle. Or Lucy, or Abigail, or Paris! Who's Paris? Or Cynthia! Cynthia, why do you have to bring her into this? I'm trying to get over her. Okay. This isn't going very well. Maybe we should just sit here and not talk for a second. I get it. You're... You're the, you're the jealous type. Jealous? Of what? I barely even know you. Good, because Marguerite was extremely jealous, and things just did not work out. I can't be with a girl who's jealous of all my ex-girlfriends. I mean, that's completely ridiculous, Caroline. It's Laura. <laughs> Laura? Laura? Laura! Okay. You don't have to get so crazy, Laura. Oh, my God. Amy, now she was crazy. <laughs> uh, where are you going? I, Cindy, can you please sit down? Hello, my name is Velma. I'm an art therapist. Uh, hi, John. I'm beginning to think this whole speed dating thing isn't really for me. You know what I mean? Hmm. John. Tell me. What do you see? Camel. Oh, really? A camel doing that? A, a camel doing camel things? I mean, mm. like a regular... Actually, maybe it's not a camel. A, a camel having sex with another camel on a very high phallic mountain. Mm. No. A phallus. Wait, it, no, 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 no. An eggplant. Wait, yes, an eggplant. I see an eggplant. I don't know why I said that, because this is not an eggplant. Looks nothing like an eggplant. You are obviously very lonely and feel you are incapable of love. Mm. What do you see? Fried egg. I see egg obsessed. This is not an egg and it looks nothing like an egg. Isn't this supposed to be open to my interpretation? No. What do you see? <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's kind of naughty, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. Yes. This? Wow, that one is beautiful. That in a very ordinary, plain sort of way. Yes. This? <laughs> that one's funny. Yes, hilarious. This? Oh, you shouldn't show that to me. That's far too scandalous. And terrifying. Yes, electrifying. Yes, this? Oh, that's ugly. Ugly, yes, this? Wow, is, is that really his? Yes, 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 yes. Finally, I've waited my whole life for you. I don't, I, yes, I've wasted my own life for you. I think we're out of time. Hi, I'm Neil. I'm in sales. I'm a salesman. You're looking beautiful today. It's wonderful to meet you. Hello, my name is Laura. Laura, I can tell you're a woman who doesn't like to waste any time, so I'll get right to the point here. Okay. They say you can know in the first second of meeting someone if you're compatible or not. Yes, I've heard that. Wow, you really are wonderful. I know, I can tell, so I'll just go ahead and say yes. Um, 
But I did not. Yes, I, I would to... like to see you again. No, no, that's not how this works. You want children? Well, eventually. I... Wow, uh, you drive a hard bargain. You know, I wasn't planning on doing this, but okay, it's a deal. Okay. The answer is yes, and I'm thrilled. Yes. I will marry you. <laughs> marry me? I already said yes. You don't have to ask twice, honey. <laughs> Hi, I'm John. John, Pat, nice to meet you. Have a seat. I'm already seated. Absolutely, sitting. same to you. So, what do you currently do, John? I don't think we're supposed to talk about our professions. <laughs> He's hilarious. Jim, he works for me. He's saying Friday, 29 bales of hay by Friday? Of course not. Not possible. Not talk about our professions, huh? That's an interesting rule. Would you agree with that? Well, I guess if your identity... Pete Moss! To... He says if not hay, then Pete Moss. They're two completely different things. People are stupid, John. Don't you agree? Anyway, what were you saying? Yes, people can get way too wrapped up in work. I agree, it's not healthy. Relationships suffer with too much work. Do you do that? I try not to. Let's talk about you. What's your best quality? Well, my best quality? Or your worst. <laughs> or three I'm... adjectives others would use to describe you? I don't know how others Friday! Would... The hay has got to be there Friday or it's my butt on the line. You're crazy. I'm telling him he's crazy. So, tell me something about yourself. What are the qualities that make you the right man for the job? Go ahead, John. I'm listening. Tell me something revealing. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but uh, I think I'm finally ready to have a real relationship, to, to meet someone. To... Fantastic. You're hired. What? Uh, this you is... start tomorrow. This is supposed to be a date. Sorry, hon. Can't date employees. Sexual harassment, you know? But you do have a very nice... Whoa, 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 that is way too personal. Boxers or briefs, now that's a selling point. Mm. Hi. Want to see pictures of my babies? This is Victor. He got in a fight last week and lost an eye. Oh. <laughs> He's, uh... Siamese. I love cats. Wow, you have 30 a plays. lot of cats. This is Chris. He paints with oils. He's a genius. Look, like a Monet. Oh, and Brutus plays piano. And Angus loves to play in paper bags. And Eli was born with six toes. And Shalimar loves his mouse toy on a string. And Juniper takes bubble baths. And Minky sleeps with her teddy bear. And Mook gets jealous when I play with anyone but him. And Elvis loves to play in bookshelves and likes to pounce on Hey, dude. I'm Brad. <laughs> hey, dude. <laughs> Seen any movies lately? Uh, no, I'm, I'm more of a book person. Actually. How about Blade Slayer? No? No. no. Revenge of the Tilapia. Revenge of the Tilapia 2. No. Those Tilapia were like on steroids, dude. They were all like, <laughs> How about Anacondas on a moped with the fat guy from The Thing with the other people, what's his name, and his dude's stuff, and he's all like, dude, don't make me say it twice. You've got herpes. I guess I missed that one. Where have you been, dude? How about Shark Feet 4, where the sharks are all dun 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 dun, and the guy's all, hmm, I think I'll go for a chomp, and then his friends show up and they're all like, Whoa! And then his girlfriend shows up and she's all, What happened here? And then his blood's all, Kush! And then the vampires show up, but he's totally like, Bah! And Megan sits by the door, and Perry just sits on my lap, and look, won't let Bandit near me. And, ba and Ninja just sleeps on my face, and here's Shalimar drinking from the toilet, and here's Susie Q on catnip. And here's Nina up on the table at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then she's like, and he's like, and then the plate glass, bam, through his heart. I love you, Angelina. Dude, you must have seen that one. 
No. You're kidding me. What do you like talk about with friends or on a date and stuff? I don't know. Um, other people, politics, books. Books? I know books. Try me. Um, Dickens? The dude who wrote Twilight. <laughs> Am I boring you? You think I'm crazy, don't you? You don't want to hear about my cats. What, what? No, no, no. It's just, I don't have any. I'm sure if I had cats, I might be able to relate. I just love cats more than people. Emmanuel Kant, uh, Louis Le Moore. Louis Le Huy? Huh. Um, well, I saw Star Wars. Yes, yeah, Star Wars. Uh, No, not exactly, dude. That was Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Same thing, right? Not the same thing, dude. Totally not the same thing. It wasn't my idea to come here, you know. It was my friend Edith's idea. She thinks I haven't gotten out enough, not since Sammy died. Let me guess, Sammy's a Siamese too. No, my husband. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Chainsaw accident. He was young. Wow. Yeah. Huh. That's what most people say. I don't think I could ever love another person, that is. Cat, on the other hand. This is Milo. He's an avid reader. And Prince loves to drink out of the teacup and pine cone. And then the Titan dudes all go back to the mini mall, zombie scum. Wait, dude, I love your shoes. Sit down. Mom! Mom, I can't. Oh, shut up. Why can't you ever just spend some quality time with your mother? Mother, you are messing up the round robin. Oh, uh, I guess it's us. That's cool, dude. I'm Brad. Yeah, pound it. It's, it's pound it. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, seen any movies lately? Blade Slayer, Shark Creed 4, Revenge of the Tilapia, Revenge of the Tilapia 2, yes. Oh, yes, dude, those tilapias were like on steroids, yes. man. They were like, rawr! <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do I have to dress up like a clown to get three minutes with my own daughter? And you'd rather talk to one of these losers? Mom, I am the facilitator. I need to facilitate. Wei Yenta! And look at your life. What do you have to show for it? Do you want to end up an old maid? What do you want for your birthday? I go to buy you a birthday present and I realize I don't even know my own daughter. What is your bra size? Dude, Dude don't make me say it twice. You've got herpes. <laughs> How about Shark Feet 4 where the sharks are all dun 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 dun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and then the guy's like, Hmm, I think I'll go for a chump. Oh, and then his friends are like, whoa! And then his girlfriend shows up, and she's like, what happens here? And then his blood's all <laughs> And then the vampires show up. You need a haircut. You know, there's a great place at the mall. I'm going to get mine done there tomorrow. Do you want me to make you an appointment? Oh, and then Saturday, we can see in that and then. Oh, and dinner. What are you doing for dinner later? I've got plenty of leftovers. Is it a date? Mom, I am busy! Oh, and then he's totally like, Bleh. and then she's all like, Bleh. and he's like, oh yeah, the plate glass through his heart, bam! I love you, Angelina! I love you, dude, be mine! Wait, what, what? No, 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 no. I don't understand why you can't ever just call your mother! My life is passing me by, Mom! I'm going to die alone and loveless! And if I never get the chance, I may never... <sighs> Nancy, what are you doing here? Dating. You said you needed time alone to not be in a relationship. I thought you were joining the Peace Corps. Risk it, people. Laura. Sorry. <laughs> what? Come on, people, now! Time is passing by! Memories all alone in the moonlight, all alone in the forever. Come on, people! 
Lady. Ever up. Hello, my name is Francois. Hi, I'm Mary. Can I tell you a secret? I'm ready, ready, ready to date. Sometimes you just gotta dive in. Hi, I wanna see pictures of my Hello, my name is Emma. Tell me that do you see? Hey dude, I'm Brad. Seen any movies lately? Uh, Pat, be right with you. Have a seat. Do I have to dress up like a clown? I think I'm finally ready to be in a Hello, real- Hello, my name is Laura! Be the animal you are, I Hello, love my you. name is Kai. I'm I love Kai. Seeking more than memories Tell all me alone in the I'm a people needer, I need people. I love you, dude. Be mine. Yes, did you see I'm the one where- Hi, Yes, I'm we see eye to eye. The body doesn't lie. Yes, I'm a terrifying. You think you're crazy, don't you? Yes, 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 Hello everyone, so welcome to Sith Food Network. I am your host, Jeb Zulete. Today we will, be we will be preparing the most delicious of dishes. Lobster with a little bit of... Nose hair! Alas, the clue we've been looking for. Let's get back to the lab. Finally, we'll have our killer. And if my suspicions are correct, I'll bet that this will lead right to... The 10 yard line. Oh, what a play. Even with the blitz coming, JJ was able to pull off the double reverse. I haven't seen a football play like that since... Five minutes ago, a report came in of a twister touching down in the lower east side of the city. Winds were up to 68 miles per hour and residents had to be evacuated. Motorists can, dis can expect delays along... The left ventricle of the heart. I'm afraid we'll have to operate. Prepare the patient for immediate surgery. It'll be a miracle if we can... Get married! Why put it off any longer? Darn if I'll be alone again. Say the word, John, and I'm yours. Give me a reason to laugh, a reason to live, a reason to love. Don't leave me burning. Hey, Patton, your lobster bottom is cooked and red with just the right amount of old bay seasoning, no? The natural flavors will just bring to life. Three dead bodies in a week. What do you mean the lab results were inconclusive? Why? Without that nose hair, we don't have a case. I haven't slept in three weeks, and he's still out there on the loose. Where could he be? He's in the huddle. It appears as though they're calling in special teams for fourth down. This reminds me of the Super Bowl against the Steelers, when Lightning Brody kicked a 57-yard field goal into the New England states and into the tri-state area, causing heavy rains and temperatures far below the consciousness. She'll need some pain medication for the, those stitches. See that her heart rate is monitored for the next 24 hours. I'll check back up on her. In the evening, when the stars are aglow with love, when the moon is full and love is in the air. Darn it all! Isn't it obvious? I'm sick of following my dreams. I'll just ask where they're going and hook up with them later. Oh, John! I'm madly in love with you. fish, it is the perfect dish for a, uh, how you say, a uh, get together. And now I will place this fruit, uh, this plate of fruit into the icebox because the dessert has had enough time to. Freeze! He's making a break for it! Yep, that's a break, all right. I've seen some fractures in my days. <laughs> but the way he came down hard on that Astro turf, that's definitely a. Break in the forecast later in the week with the sun shining through. It looks as if the skies will be clear. We have a pulse. Oh, that was a close one. This patient needs arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you. In a quart of milk, and then we will just add some fresh fruit, and then it is almost time for dessert me? How could you? A small dish of the butter. All over Rhode Island, storms could. 
go all the way for a touchdown with a score now. I'll tie it up inside. I can't bear it any longer. Do you love me? Do you? Because I'm done my shift at four, but I'll return the kickoff for 15 years in the slammer. You better talk now or you'll be gently garnished with the parsley and topped off with a bad case of the muggies all week until we are alone at last. Kiss me, you fool. That is all I ask. For the weather tonight, have a great dinner. And I'll see you in the slammer. Not 1.15, not 1.30, and certainly not 5 freaking p.m. You know, I don't know if I can wait much longer. I'm thirsty. Hey, Jill! Uh, there you are. What took you so long? What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? You're late. I am? Oh, don't tell me you forgot. Forgot what? You and I are supposed to fetch a pail of water? Oh, hey, Jill, what's going on? <laughs> you said that already. I did? What's gotten into you? I'm not sure, but I woke up with this wicked headache. Oh, is that why you're late? I guess. I slept for like 24 hours. I think it has something to do with this bandage on my head. I don't remember a thing. Well, you're here now, so let's fetch that pail of water. I don't really feel like it. But those were our instructions. What instructions? Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. <laughs> Sounds like an awful lot of work. Let's skip it. We can't just skip it. And besides, skipping is Lou's specialty. Lou? Lou who? Oh, you know. Lou. Lou, Lou. Skip to my Lou, Lou, Lou. Skip to my... You know what? Never mind. Oh, hey, Joe, what's going on? <laughs> just come up the hill with me. Don't do it, Joe. Come on. Let's go. Why? Because I'm thirsty? So I have a Coke or something. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of Coke? Coke? It does the body good. That's milk. So I have milk then, whatever you want. But if you're going, make mine a chocolate milk. You are going up the hill with me whether you like it or not. Huh? Are you okay? What? Oh, just come up the hill with me. Fine. Or else. I heard you. Don't do it, Jack. I heard you. Not that stupid. Jeez, take a chill pill, Jill. You know what? That's fine. I'll just go up by myself. Right. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, who said that? Because you're really starting to get on my last nerve. Uh, Jill? What now? Did you take your medication this morning? Why? You're talking to the air again. I heard a voice. I know you did, and that's why you're taking your medication. <laughs> This time I actually heard a voice. I know I did, and it it came from out there. Out where? The void. The void? Can't you see the void? I prefer to avoid voids. It's so dark out there. Pitch black, anything could be out there, Jack. Okay, now you're scaring me. Don't be scared, it's just me. There it goes again! Okay, that was spooky! So you heard it? I heard it. Who said that? I told you, it's just me, Gladys! <laughs> Gladys? Even the name is spooky. Let's get the heck out of here. To the top of the hill. You'll be sorry. What did she say? You'll be sorry. How does she know? Everybody knows. Knows what? This is a very old story. What is? The one you stuck in. <laughs> I don't think I understand what you mean. Stop talking to her. No, maybe we should listen to her. No, I'm, I'm too scared. Oh, then you go on without me. I want to know what this Gladys has to say. I can't. Why not? 
Chris, there's a void back there now, and it's even darker than the one before. Uh, Jack, since when are you afraid of the dark? Since I started hearing voices in it. I'm not a voice. I'm a person. I'm a nice person. I'm Gladys. Woo! <laughs> what now, Jack? I think I just peed a little. <laughs> What do you mean we're stuck in a story? This is a very old story. Everybody here knows how it's going to end. Everybody where? In the audience. We all know the ending. I don't. Oh my god, another voice! They're multiplying! Really? I find this story fresh and original and extremely entertaining. I, for one, have no idea how it's going to end. As a matter of fact, I'm perilously close to the edge of my seat. You must be joking. I'm completely absorbed in Jill's plight for water, and this subplot of Jack turning into a total wuss has taken me entirely by surprise. While I admit that's an interesting twist, it's hardly going to change the structure of the story. It's still going to end the same way. Don't ruin it for me. You honestly mean to say you've never heard the old nursery rhyme about Jack and Jill? What rhyme? Yeah, I'd like to know too. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, but stupid here won't come with me. I'm not finished yet. There's, There's more. more. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Just great. Go ahead and ruin it for the rest of us, why don't you? Surely you've heard this before. No, I haven't. And how do you know my name? I don't know your name. You just called me by it. I did? Surely you've heard this before. That's what you said. Don't deny it. I'm not denying anything. How did you know my name was Shirley? I didn't. What are you, a mind reader? Oh, Shirley, you're joking. Stop using my name. I don't even know you. <laughs> now the voices in my head are arguing. Jack, get a hold of yourself. And her name is Shirley. It's even scarier than Gladys. Could have at least had the decency to tell us to plug our ears. When? Before you blabbed about the unexpected twists and turns of their story. I thought for sure you'd heard it already. Spoiler alert! I'm going to give away the shocking conclusion now. I apologize. Now that you ruined everything, I might as well just go home, curl up in bed, and finish watching the last episode of How I Met Your Mother. Oh, oh, I remember that one! Yeah, yeah, yeah! It sucked! <laughs> No, you're not. I'm not. 
I told you, Jill, it's a trap. Well, what do you mean I'm not real? Wait a second. Have I been duped? Is Gladys actually a part of this story? No, no, no. I assure you, I'm not a part of the story. I'm simply interrupting it for a moment to save our two main characters from calamity. But I want to see calamity. That's why I paid for my seat. And just who do you think you're calling characters? Who? You mean to say you'd like to see the two of them tumble down the hill and crack their heads open? Not now, but I know it's going to happen. But before you ruined everything, I think it would have been rather thrilling. Oh, that's sick. I bet you also like a good car accident. If there are severed limbs, you bet I do. <laughs> Why don't you come up here? I want to have a word with you. You do? Sure do, Shirley. Gladly, Gladys. Now look what you've done. Now the voices are beckoning each other. All I wanted was a drink of water. I didn't mean to cause such an uproar. And I certainly didn't need to become a part of this weird thing you call a story. Oh, you've been stuck in the story for generations. So you said. Um, what? May I ask it was a story? Oh, surely Jack must have told you. Told me what? Not you, Jill. How would Jack know what a story is? Yeah, how would I know? Oh, come on, Jack, don't lie. I'm not lying. Really? I have no idea what you're talking about. I guess I know more than I think I do. You know more about what? I'm confused. Me too. Yeah, Gladys, what's the deal? How come you know so much about Jack and Jill? Well, I'm the kind of person who likes to read the last page of a book first. I never see a show without reading the script first, and I love movie trailers because they give everything away. <laughs> do you also digest your food before you eat it? I just like to know what I'm in for. But, but why? That way I don't run the risk of being disappointed. But you run the risk of never being surprised. I don't like surprises. I love them. Once, my husband threw me a surprise party. I opened the door and everyone jumped out and screamed, surprise! After I recovered from the triple bypass, I was grateful to have such wonderful friends. <laughs> Will you two shut up? Goodness, you are thirsty. Here, I think I have some Evian in my purse. What's an Evian? Don't take it, Jill. It's poison. It's water. Poison. Water. Well, which is it? Poison or water? Drink it and find out. Oh, you are sick, lady. Fine. Don't drink it. I was just saving you a hip up that menacing hill. I don't care about water right now. Oh, sure you do. Every day, you and Jack go up the hill to fetch a pail of water, and every single day, the two of you come tumbling down it. I don't know what you're talking about. This is the first time I've ever fetched a pail of water. No, it's not. You went yesterday, and the day before that, and the day before that. You really don't remember? Stop listening to her. She's a kook. I've never been up that hill before. Yes, you have. And so has Jack. Jack fell down and broke his crown. That's why he's wearing a bandage. <laughs> Stop the madness! <laughs> Okay, now this is getting good again. Yo, Jill, are these ladies bothering you? Who's this? Oh, Lou, of course. Lou who? Oh, uh, hey, toots. Have we met? No, but I know your stories. You do? She knows everything, apparently. Oh, that's right. I'm Lou. See? I'm Lou, and I'm skipping to myself. <laughs> uh, Lou? Yeah? Do you know what happens when Jack and I go up that hill? I uh, sure do, babe. Flat. See? I told you. Everybody knows. What do you want? A medal? But why don't we remember? Ah, uh, you done knocked your head real good. Oh, a head trauma. That's it? Sure. It explains why she don't remember none and why he's so stupid. Hey. But if you know what happens when we go up that hill, then, then why did you ever warn us? Because I don't give a rat's patootie. That's why. <laughs> I don't want to be stuck doing the same thing forever and ever. That's... That's sad. And pathetic. And boring. Seriously, this story has gone entirely off the rails. Well, that's why I stopped it. It's high time we inject some new life into it. But you said yourself, you like to know how things end. That doesn't always mean I like the endings. Really? Yeah. I've always fancied myself to be quite the writer. So, let's rescue this story, along with some other ones in dire need of better twists. What do you propose? Well. There's one story I think our little Jack here would be perfect for. He's just the sort of spice it needs to make it more interesting. Really? What's the story? It's called Susan and the Beanstalk. 
No Susan. And what's a beanstalk? Jeez, let me finish. For a pair of fictional characters, you two have no patience whatsoever. Sorry. Hey, I know Susan. You do? Yeah, she's a total drag. <laughs> Got that right. How so? Well, a magic beanstalk grows outside for Stop, stop! I haven't seen that story yet. You haven't missed much. Spoiler alert, all she does is eat the beans. Oh. That's the whole story? Uh, it's a big snooze. Uh, how would Jack make it more interesting? For starters, he could climb the beanstalk. Uh, are you kidding? Jack can hardly climb a ladder without peeing his pants. And why would I want to climb a beanstalk anyway? For adventure. Anything could be way up there. But I don't like adventure, and I sure as heck don't like way out there. Come on, Jack, she's just trying to help. Yeah, so grow a pair, why don't you? Jack and the beans has a better ring to it already. Well, what about Susan? <laughs> Who cares about Susan? She's boring. Yeah, but so am I. Are you just going to kick me out of my own story? Fine. She can help Mary find a little lamb or something. I can barely climb up a hill without breaking my neck. What makes you think I can handle a beanstalk? Fine, forget about the beanstalk. Have you heard the one about Brenda Spratt? Oh, yeah, I forgot about Brenda. How is the old fatty? Dead. Dead? Yeah, heart attack. Oh. Who's Brenda? Spoiler alert, her husband Bill Spratt could eat no fat. And Brenda could eat no lean. So she pigged out on cheeseburgers until her aorta blew. That's horrible! Horribly dull. I went to a matinee performance of her story once, and all she did was eat cheeseburgers for three hours. Well, what was Bill doing? Nothing. She ate him. No. Oh, before the curtain even came up. So where do I come into all of this? Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. Take it from there and see what happens. Anything is possible when you have an imagination. Imagine what? But he's fictional. So? So he has no imagination. Imagination is imposed upon him, not the other way around. And besides, I don't want him running around with other women. He's my boyfriend. Wait, I'm your what? Boyfriend. Okay, I'm not your boyfriend. I'm your brother. Twist. <laughs> Do you honestly think I'd want to fetch a pail of water with my brother? And I might be boring, but I'm not that boring. So you're saying you're not my sister? That's right. And this whole time I could have been putting the moves on you. Yep. What a rip off. <laughs> Tough break. Oh, well that explains why you never tried to kiss me. Oh. For a while I thought you played for the other team. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Forget about Jack Spratt. Hmm. Have you heard the one about Sharon Be Nimble? Who's Sharon? Spoiler alert, she jumps over candlesticks. And? That's it, babe. You could boot Connie Horner from her story, but I'm afraid that one's beyond saving. Connie Horner? Spoiler alert, she sits in a corner. That's all? Well, she does put her thumb in a pie and pulls out plum. Where's the conflict? Oh yeah, that's right. There isn't any. That's, that's why I almost didn't mention it. Even changing it to Jack Horner wouldn't improve things. Oh, well, hold on just a second. Yes, dear? How come you keep cooking up these stories for Jack to be in? I'm a person too, remember? No, you're not. You're a fictional character. Yeah, but, but I'd like to know what adventure tastes like. Face it, Jill, you're a snooze. Nobody wants to see you star in your own story. Why not? Because you're a woman. <gasps> so? So? History shows that male protagonists are far more interesting than female ones. That's not true. Yes, it is. Why do you think they sent you up the hill with Jack? Because the pail of water is heavy and I need help carrying it up. Nonsense. Without Jack to add a masculine edge to the story, the whole audience would fall asleep. Isn't that right, Shirley? I hate to admit it, but he does make the story worth watching. Uh, how so? <laughs> Have you checked out his pipes? Oh, Doug! I've been working out. I can tell. If I had known when I beckoned you from the void, you would turn out to be so, so sexist. You know, I never would have done it. Go back to your seat at once. Hey, 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 relax, Jack. Wait, what did I do? I was talking to Jill. So why'd you say relax, Jack? It's a saying. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Relax, Jack. Yeah, Jill, relax. <laughs> so that's why you want to replace all of these female characters with Jack. 
Because a man makes them more interesting. Oh, of course. Jack and the Beanstalk, Jack Sprat, Jack Be Nimble. These stories would sell out in minutes. Even Jack Horner would sell more tickets than Susan and Sharon and Brenda and Connie combined. You're nuts, lady. No, I'm not. Old Yellow was supposed to be a girl, but then they realized shooting a male dog in the face made for a much more emotional ending. <laughs> they shoot Old Yeller? <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's a bit late for that! You know, there are plenty of great stories with female protagonists. Name one. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Try again. Little Women. Followed by the sequels Good Wives, Little Men, and Joe's Boys. Thelma and Louise. Brad Pitt. Come on, Brad, help me out. I hate to say it, but I think she may be right. Of course I'm right. Even the classical writers knew that male protagonists were far more better than female ones. Take Shakespeare, for instance. He wrote manly plays with manly titles like Hamlet and Macbeth and Othello, not Cindy and Myrtle and Pam. So I'm supposed to go up that same stupid hill forever and ever? I'm afraid so. Oh, and meanwhile, Jack gets to have all the fun, sitting in corners and climbing deep stalks and jumping over candlesticks and, <laughs> and eating with other women. Just one other woman. And she'd be his wife, so there'd be no hanky-panky going on. I can't believe I'm hearing this. And from other women, no less. I believe it, sugar pie. The original Lou was a woman till I stepped in. And it's a good thing, too. Her skipping had nothing on my skipping. Is that so? Oh, uh, sure, if this is her. Lou, skip to my Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. It was pathetic. Dreadful. Oh, Jack, you don't buy all this garbage, do you? She makes an interesting case. Uh, a head case, maybe. Oh. If memory serves, you're the head case. What's that supposed to mean? You're taking medication, right? How do you know that I'm taking medication? Oh, Jack mentioned it early in the exposition. That is none of your business. Oh, it wasn't until Jack mentioned it. Exposition is fair game for audiences. <laughs> Way to go, Jack! Oh, hey, dude, what's going on? <laughs> All I want is a drink of water. That's it. Fine. If that's how you want it, go on, dear. Thank you. Let's go, Jack. No way. I want to meet up with some of those other chicks. <laughs> what other chicks? You know, Susan and Brenda and Sharon and Connie. Uh, maybe they won't play so hard to get. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I'll go with you. Oh, sweet. Oh, but first, uh, let me get my jump rope. Yeah. Pigs. Pigs. Both of you. You know what? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I'll, I'll just go up the hill by myself. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You can't do that yet. Why not? That would be an unsatisfactory ending. Oh, gotcha. Uh, no, it wouldn't. If it surprises you more, I've got plenty up my sleeve. I can prove to you that a female protagonist is just as interesting as a male one. I'll climb up that hill. I'll fetch that pail of water, but this time, I won't come tumbling down. I'll come marching proudly down! <sighs> then what? What do you mean, then what? That's it. It's the story of one woman taking charge of her own destiny! Woman's liberation! Girl power! Girl power? <laughs> I'm half asleep already. See? What did I tell you? I thought you don't like to know how stories end. Only the good ones. Boring stories? Uh, I'd rather skip them altogether. Uh, well, spoiler alert. Real life is boring. But this story will be exciting. Prove it. You know, you asked for it. Oh, boy. See you later, sucker! Oh, this ain't good. This ain't good at all. Why not? Uh, this ain't the first time she challenged a boy. Really? Oh, uh, sure. It was a long time ago. Some playwright by the name of William from Tennessee or something tried to claim she wasn't necessary. When he threatened to cut her from the story, she went ballistic and tried to prove she was vital to the plot. What happened? Same old, same old. She and Jack went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. So why don't I remember any of this? Duh. You fell down and broke your crown. And Jill came tumbling after? No, she disappeared. She did? Ugh, oh, for days and days. It wasn't long before the whole town was parched. They tried sending Jack up by himself, but he forgot where he was going and filled the whole pail with seashells. Seashells? 
Yeah, seashell she sells by the seashore. He sells seashells by the seashore? No, 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 sweetheart. She sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Yes, she sells seashells by the seashore. Who's she? Margaret. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, what happened to Jill? She finally turned up on some desert island. So that's why she's taking medication? Exactly. It takes away her imagination. Well, that must have been awful, having a, a fictional character with an imagination of her oh, own. It was. Thank goodness for Jill's pills. The town has been sufficiently quenched ever since. But now it looks like she's stopped taking them again. Then we'd better stop her. Oh, my bother! Wouldn't you rather meet up with those chicks I was telling you about? Well, I never realized how much we needed her. I'm feeling thirsty already. Uh, me too. I feel like I got a wad of cotton in my mouth. Quick then, to the top of the hill. Lulu, stick to the hill! been in this predicament before. Really? Yeah! Fictional characters never listen to me. I usually get the old brush off and end up going back to my seat. Do you think Jill will come tumbling back down the hill? Probably. But without Jack, I just don't care. <laughs> me neither. That Jill is a drag. You got that right. Let's go, Shirley. Ow! Oh! Ow. Hey! What's the meaning of this? Why can't I get off the stage? There's a wall. I can't see it, but but there's a wall. What's going on? I heard a voice. Did you hear a voice? I heard a voice. Where did it come from? The audience, I think. All I see is a void. Me too. It's, it's awfully dark out there. Who said that? It was me. Me who?
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I think it's good. Is it filming yet? Are we ready to go? Yeah. yeah. We, why are we using my camera? This is the nicest. Fine, but afterwards I'm deleting all of this crap. Fine, whatever. Let's just get going already. Mason, just do it already. It was your idea. I don't want to. Mason, it was your idea. You have to do it. No, it sounds insane, but it's completely legitimate, and I just don't want to do it. Just YOLO it, man. It's not like anything's actually going to happen. This has never worked before. Nobody even knows if he exists. Guys, just, you know, I'm filming all of this crap, so maybe we could just pick from a hat or something? Not my hat. Uh, Fine. Really? Well, I, I have an idea. Uh, what? What are you doing? Look, hold on. Cool. Pass me an apple. Uh, sure. Uh, what are you doing? There are, uh, five scraps of paper. One of them has a dot on it, so whoever picks the one with the dot has to say it. Does sound good to everyone? Sure. Yes. Oh, God damn it. Uh, uh, that was our original idea. Shut up, Drew. Sam, get the camera. Let's oh, go. Right, thanks. Um. Right. Okay, guys, wait up. Wait for me, guys. Okay, has he done it yet? Okay. Sam, make this in our class? Hey, that's my sister's, man. Put that down. <laughs> Yo, shut up! Mason, just go already. I'm not doing it until everybody's completely silent. It's not gonna work anyway. What does it matter? Come on, man. Shut up! Mason, come on, please, do it. Please, be quiet. Oh, come right. on. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. <sighs> Yo, did you see that? Oh Wait, where'd Mason go? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Wait, Sam, let me see the camera. Oh god, stop it, let me see the footage. Stop it, man. Come on, stop bullying the camera. Stop it. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh god. Is it good? Yeah, it's on, it's on. Okay, here. Her name. I can't, I can't see you, man. Fill the flux. Her name. Okay, no, give me, give me that. Her name. I know it. Sam Crawford. Luke Banani. All right. So, all right. Two hours ago, a couple of our friends went missing. Now, we don't know exactly what it is. Turn it on, turn it on. I need to walk here. Okay, guys, I need to walk. Okay, I need to walk. Okay. Guys, guys. I feel like something just isn't right. Oh, what do you mean? Oh. Cigarettes, the fedora. It's definitely Bogart. Oh, God. Hey, come here. You sit down. Okay. How did we even get here? I don't know, man. Mason. Mason? Mason always wanted to try this, man. Why did we agree to do that? I don't know, man. Everyone has dreams. Dreams? Really? Right now? Personally? Right now, I'm sick of following my dreams. I'm just gonna ask them where they're going and hook up with them later. <laughs> is that is that Mitch Hedberg? Yeah, it is. I'm surprised you know. Oh, yeah, he's one of my favorites, man. I love him. Hearts full of passion, jealousy, and. Okay. I think I'm the last one that's alive. All the other ones got taken by, by him, but let me just play it again to make sure. Play it for her, you play it for me. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And when two lovers woo, they still say I love you. All that you can love. Good morning, Grace. Good morning, Martha. How are you doing today, Grace? Well, pretty much the same as yesterday, Martha. I had the talk with Mike yesterday after work, like I said I was going to. 
Mary was already asleep when I got home, and I didn't want to wake her up just to tell her a bedtime story. You should have. So, Mike and I grabbed a couple of beers and we sat down on the steps. I told him we needed to talk, and he said, we need to talk are the four most dangerous words in the English language. We didn't get to. Dr. Bookman, making your ride early today? I came early so that I could be late later, if that makes any sense. Who are you talking to? Me, Grace. Grace? Who's? Miss Niobe, the patient. Patient? She's been immobile for some time. You're wasting your breath. But I don't think that. I see the bed sores have healed. That nurse who had your shift for a while, what was her name? Callis Carter. Kelly Carter. She's been reassigned. A place with more supervision, I hope. She was just a little burnt out. It happens to all of us. It wouldn't happen if you would be more clinical. Yes, doctor. All right, I want you to up her calorie intake. She's looking a little thin. Yes, doctor. I've got to get to the quadriplegic at 1513 and the other comb at 1509. They I'll have see. names, you know. I also have GI rounds, so don't take too long in here. And remember, fast, efficient, clinical. You have to get in and get out. You have a lot of patients to cover. You forgot cold. Oh, and one more thing. We're having a meeting later with Mr. Tante and Mr. Niobe. I want you there. Uh, wait, what meeting? How could I forget? All right, I'll see you there. Oh, uh, what meeting, Martha? I've got other patients to get to. I have to get in and get out. Fast, efficient, clinical. Martha, I... What shall I do today? I could read a book, could watch TV. Oh, I know. I know. I can just listen to my respirator. I mean, there's endless hours of excitement with that. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a dancer. Percy. Good morning, Grace. Percy, I'm so glad that you're here. How are you? Percy? Percy, talk to me. Please. I went to a dance recital. Katie was dancing. I promised John I would go. She even did some swing dancing. Do you remember the Moose Lodge? Do you remember Jane? She used to drag me there for all those lessons. Who was that guy you were with? His name was... Um, Doug, or Dougie when I wanted to irritate him. Well, whatever his name was. I thought I was a bad dancer. And then I met you. binary system. It's music, not math. Music is math. I had to date a math major. Look, can't we just dance the way we've always danced? You know, uh, one, two, one, two. 
We're swing dancing, not slow dancing. And I'm tired of just shuffling around the dance floor. And sometimes a girl just doesn't want to dip. OK, then. Uh, one, two, one. Juliet. I saw this video. Do you realize how many disasters have started with those words? Oh, come on. Where's your sense of adventure? I left it at the emergency room at St. Mary's. Killjoy. I saw this video on swing dancing. Ooh, convenient. And this is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to swing you up. And then I'm going to swing you right. And then I'll swing you left. And then both your legs will go around my hip. OK, in your dreams, that is not happening. Come on, this is swing dancing. And I don't swing that way. Huh? OK, um, look, why don't we just try a nice two-step? Or better yet, how about a waltz? You can't waltz to a swing beat. Oh, I have a feeling that I'll be waltzing around all night. One. One. Two. One. Ow! Look, can't we just do something different? Uh, I've got STDS9 at- Wait, up, you have an STD? <laughs> STD. S9. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I've got all seven seasons on DVD. Percy, I think it'd be better if you had an STD. That's not funny. You said you'd go dancing. Yeah, to make you happy. No guy actually goes dancing for the fun of it. He's having fun. Not so much. And no way am I doing that either. Yes. Do you like to dance? Yes. Well, then let's go. I thought I was a bad dancer, and then I met you. You were the worst dancer ever created by God. <laughs> by the end of the night, you were up to 17 toe stomps. <laughs> like it's my fault you can't dance the five step. I fell for you that night, especially when you tried to dip me. <laughs> you were so alive. You were so... Alive. I'm still alive. I want to dance with you again, Grace. Watch your feet. Why am I talking? 
This is stupid. Percy, don't leave me here alone. I've missed seeing him too. So, Mike and I had the talk yesterday. How did it go? Mike said that I work a lot, weird hours, and that even when I'm at home, my head's still at the hospital. He wants me to quit. Martha, you can't. That's just... when we fought. I am needed here at the hospital. I am doing good here. I need you. Great. They keep loading me up with more patients. I don't have time to spend with them now. The only reason that I have time to- Nurse. Doctor, I- Weren't you listening to me this morning, nurse? Our patients need conversation. You're wasting your time and you're neglecting your other patients. 1326 needs a new IV. I need you there. I'll check back later. Dad, is it time already? How's my baby girl doing? I'm blue. Might seem silly, but I bought your favorite book from when you were younger. I remember. You had me read it again, and again, and again. I got really sick of this book. <laughs> read it again, Daddy. It's late, Gracie. What are you still doing up? You haven't read me a bedtime story yet. Look, it's late and I'm beat. You promised. All right, what book will it be? The Stone Princess. No, not again. Daddy! We've read that book every night for the past 10 years. But I'm only six! How about Goldilocks? Now there's a detective novel. I don't want a detective novel. I want the Stone Princess. Little Red Riding Hood? Granny gets swallowed by a wolf. Look, I brought you something new to read tonight. What is it? The New York Times. I want a story. OK, OK. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Dow Jones. He was average and down 20 points. When his stock went up the hill, people were very happy. But there was this terrible bear. No, I want the stone princess. Mm-hmm. Listen to me. I am listening, Gracie. Listen to me with your eyes, Daddy. All right, where is it? Here. <clears throat> the Stone Princess. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there lived a dancer. Every day, she would take her sheep and dance among the wildflowers. Oh, like the flowers I picked for you? Hmm? The flowers I picked. What Did flowers? Didn't you get them? Mama said she gave them to you. Oh, I, I put them in a vase downstairs. They smell wonderful. That was a long time ago. Story, Daddy. On that morning, a Gorgon landed in the meadow. A Gorgon is a snake lady. Yeah, I work with a bunch of Gorgons. <laughs> Story, Daddy. The Gorgon stared at the dancer. And the stare was so horrible that the dancer gasped in shock. As she gasped, she felt the breath freeze in her lungs. The world grew dark as she froze in mid-step. Frozen? Was she cold? I don't think they meant frozen in that way. Ah, Mr. Niobe. I believe I saw your son-in-law somewhere. Let me see if I can go get him. Doctor? Yes, Mr. Tante? Has there been any change at all? No change from yesterday, I'm afraid. No change for the past seven months. 
Mr. Tante, I told you that there would be a very good chance your daughter would not recover from Which this. means that there is some chance that she might recover. We are doing everything that we can for your daughter. I have to get back to my GI rounds. Mr. Tante, we'll talk all this through in the meeting. What meeting? John, we are doing everything that we can think I of. I know that, Martha. I told you that yesterday. I can't tell you how glad I am you're back. I know what to do, Martha. Thank you. That evening, father, concerned that his daughter had not returned home, searched the hills. He found his daughter motionless, shut in a prison of stone. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. You can stay, Percy. What are you doing? We're reading a book. I'm reading a book to Gracie. Well, then, uh, I guess I'd better go. Don't. I have a meeting. Meet some other time. It's important. Meetings aren't important. Gracie is important. Spend more time with her. Like you did? Uh, I'm sorry. I've learned from my mistakes. It may be too late for me, but it's not too late for you. It's too late for the both of us, John. Grace is gone. I'm not gone. She's not gone. Has she said a word to you since the accident? No. But I know she can still hear me. How? Don't fight. I've been talking to the doctor. So have I. Dr. Boatman says there's very little chance that she'll come out of this. Which means that there is some chance. We're having a meeting with Dr. Boatman today. What? It's time to make a decision, John. And I've decided to let nature take its course. Let nature you take... Let Gracie... I... Grace is already gone! I'm not gone! She's not gone. You... We... Need to let her go, John. I gave her away once. What do you mean? Seven years ago? I, I don't understand. I know. Seven years ago. That was our, our wedding, wedding day. day. You sure about this? I mean, you barely even know the boy. But you know when you know. Why the courthouse? It has a whiff of a scandal about it. That's one of the reasons why I chose the courthouse. The church, all of our family and friends could have been here for the wedding. And that's the other reason why I chose the courthouse. Kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Grace, I wanted to give you a lot of things. I wanted to give you... I know, Daddy. I... Right now, I just... I want you to give me away. Are you sure about this? I mean, his name is Percy. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Go inside, I'll be there in a minute. I've, uh, I've, uh, I've got the license, but, but the rings, I... We can I... pick them up later. What is it? I'm, I'm just nervous. Did you change your mind? Oh, no, no. Uh, it, it's just that when I proposed, I didn't expect it to be a two-day engagement. Well, why wait? It's a whole new life, Grace. And we haven't had any time to think about this. Paralysis of analysis. What? Percy, have you ever jumped off a high dive? No. I kind of had this thing about heights. Okay, so low it, dive then. Well, 
I sunburn easy, so I never... I'm going to tell you a story, okay? So this one time I was at summer camp. A summer camp story? Really? Don't interrupt. So they had this diving tower over the lake, and one morning I got up before anyone else, and I climbed to the top of the tower, and the lake looked a lot smaller from up there. And the morning mist covered the water, and you could barely see anything. And I was terrified. I didn't want to jump. So you just closed your eyes, and you jumped. Heck no. I held on to the rail so tight, I squeezed all the blood out of my fists. So what's your point? Well, I couldn't just stand there all day with white knuckles. So I let go of the rail, and counted to three, and I jumped. Let go of the rail, Percy. Okay. One. Two. Three. Happy anniversary, Grace. Happy anniversary, Percy. I can't believe I forgot our anniversary. I forgot, too. I promised you. For better or for worse. I know. But... Which is better? And which is worse? Well then, Mr. Niobe. Now that we're uh, all here, I... Suppose we have a lot to discuss. No, I I've already weighed in on everything you told me last week. Wait, Good last day. week? Uh, I've made my decision. What is it? You've made your decision? I don't get any say in this. I'm her husband. And I'm her father. Mr. Tante, I know this must be difficult for you, but legally, Mr. Niobe is the one who gets to decide the level of your daughter's care. Level of care? This isn't care. We're talking about killing her. Percy? By taking the patient off of life support, we are no longer artificially extending the patient's life. Her name is Grace. There is still some chance that she will live without the life support. But it isn't likely, is it? And what is the other option? We've been over this a thousand times, John. Just let her lie there? For what our guilty consciences? Let her go, John. Don't do this. The decision is made. Um, would you two like to talk about this no. privately? John, the real reason I called you here is so... so that you had a chance to say goodbye. Goodbye? But I... I can't. We'll wait outside. I wanted a little more time, Grace. Just a little more time. Read me a story, Daddy. Mr. Gorgon stared at the dancer, gasped in shock. The world grew dark. She froze in mid step. That evening, Father, missing his daughter, searched the hills. When he got to the meadow, <laughs> when he got to the meadow, he saw his daughters locked in the twilight, forever dancing yet never moving, locked in a prison of stone. Grace, you're crying. Martha, Martha, nurse. Grace is crying. Grace is crying? I was reading the story. What are you saying? She cried I'm during the story. I'm not following. Grace can hear the story. All right. 
Let me get Dr. Boatman. What's going on? Grace can hear me. She's in there. Let's not jump to conclusions now. <laughs> she cried during the story. Look, tearing is an automatic <laughs> reflex when the eyes dry. But, Mr. Tante, this has <laughs> happened many times before. Aside from a slightly elevated heart rate, her vital signs have not changed. Help me! But she cried. I understand that loved ones may grasp for final straws. Final straws? Percy, surely now would you say that there has been no change? I'm afraid not. She can't move. She can't talk. She can't even. She can't even wipe away her own tears. I'm afraid that's right. I'm still here! So nothing has changed. Everything has changed. Even if she can't hear us, even if by some miracle she can understand us, do you think she would want to be trapped? Like, like that? Why she's crying? Because she can't take it anymore. I'm begging you. Do you think this is easy? Do you think I want her to die? Go ahead. Percy, I'm scared. I can't breathe, help me! It's your heart! She's suffering! That's normal. It will only be a moment. Dr. Percy, I can't feel your hand. Hold me tighter! There. Now. Time of death 924. Jump, Grace. One, two, three. 